I'd like to bring this meeting of the school committee to order and ask all of you to join with me in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to welcome everybody in attendance here tonight and thank you for coming. I also want to welcome our viewers on television. Uh, the first item on our agenda is to receive comments. Is there anybody attending tonight's meeting who isn't already on the agenda who would like to speak to the school committee? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands in the audience, so I'm going to move along. Uh, from our student representatives, we'll start with North. Thank you. The AP exams begin today and will continue through Friday, May 17th. Please check the website for specific dates and times. PNHS graduation will be held on Saturday, June 1st. Um, Plymouth North has the morning graduation this year, this year, which will begin at 9.30 a.m. This event will be held on the Plymouth North High School's football field. In the event of inclement weather, the ceremony will take place inside the gymnasium. Upcoming events for seniors. Um, Senior Fest is May 15th. Um, the senior final exams are Monday, May 20th through Thursday, May 23rd. Makeups ex makeup exams will be Friday, May 24th. Hypnotist night is May 22nd. Last day of classes is May 23rd. Um, class day is May 24th. Graduation practice is May 28th. Dinner dance is May 28th. Graduate Another graduation practice is May 30th and convocation is May 30th, and the two graduation practices are mandatory. The fifth annual Empty Bowls will take place on Thursday, May 9th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, at Plymouth North High School. The cost is $10 per person. Enjoy a meal of soup and bread with live entertainment and a silent auction. The Junior Prom will be held on Friday, May 17th at the Indian Pond Country Club from 6 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Please make sure to check your student's Aspen account to get the most um, current academic standing. M Math MCAS for grade 10 will be held on Tuesday, May, 20, May 21st, and Wednesday, May 22nd. Attention juniors attending prom on Friday, May 17th. Permission slips for early dismissal on prom day are now available to pick up in student services. Please fill them out and have your parents sign. All completed forms are due to student services by Friday, May 10th. On Thursday, May 2nd, the students from the technology and vocational programs offered at North showcased their projects in the cafeteria at Plymouth North High School. The, the event was a huge success, allowing the students to present what they had accomplished throughout the four years in the vocational tech program. Next week, May 13th through May 17th, will be Speak Week. I don't know if it's Speak the Word or SP or the acronym. Um, is, and it's about kindness, showing, um, showing kindness, noticing kindness, sharing kindness, and encouraging kindness. Um, Speak Week stands for Stand Up, Stay Strong, Stand Together, Pay It Forward, Encourage One Another, Advocate for Change, and kindness starts with one. During advisories um, this week, students will participate in activities revolving around acts of kindness. The Patriot League Scholar Athletic Dinner will be held in, the, in Hingham on Tuesday. S two students from Plymouth North were invited to attend. Congratulations to Sadie Fosdick and, a and Aiden Campbell for being named Patriot League Scholar Athletes from Plymouth North. On Wednesday, May 8th, the junior class will be attending a presentation called Taylor's Message during a school assembly. This presentation is facilitated by both Kathy and Chris Sullivan with the goal of delivering a message of hope, love, and a, new, and a newfound power for students to deal with peer pressure, tough choices they face every day. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that report. And now we'll go to South. Hi guys, um, today is going to be my last meeting because unfortunately I cannot attend the next meeting but I just want to say thank you to everybody for the past two years. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience and I wrote you guys a little bit, little card and I hope you guys got the chance to read it. 
All right, so for the last time, <laughs> um, congratulations to the students and staff of the Plymouth South High School Theater Guild. Their performance of the musical Anything Goes was a huge hit. Set design, costumes, acting, singing, dancing, and of course, the pit were phenomenal. We are very proud of these students and all of our staff. Our 2019 AP exams began today and will take place through May 17th at St. Bonaventures. Um, it's off campus for a quiet testing environment with no distractions. Our senior final exam schedule as well as the end of, year, of the end of the year final exam schedule for underclassmen has been shared with all staff, students, and parents. And the 2019 CCTE Senior Showcase will take place tomorrow night on May 7th at 7 o'clock in the cafeteria. You can come see all the amaz amazing projects our senior technical studies students have been working on throughout the years. Our junior prom assembly will have a special presentation as well as Plymouth North of Taylor's story on May 8th at 9.30 a.m. Taylor's mother shares a story of the death of her daughter on prom night due to alcohol consumption. In addition, an evening portion is being sponsored by PYDV at the Spire Center downtown at 6 o'clock. The Plymouth South High School Spring Choral Concert will take place May 8th at 7 o'clock. And uh, the Plymouth South High School Junior Prom is May 10th at 6 p.m. at Indian Pond Country Club. If any of you are going, I'll see you there. Um, our student council raised over $450 for the Walk of Hunger in Boston. Members walked five miles in support of this wonderful fundraiser. And our annual Top 10 Breakfast will take place May 16th at 8 a.m. at Southside Fair. This is one of the best events of the year as we recognize our Top 10 seniors in the class of 2019. Our Athletic Senior Award Nights will take place on Sunday, May 19th at 6 p.m. And over 100 senior athletes will be recognized for their commitment to athletics at Plymouth Cell. We want to congratulate our Skills USA competitors who earned medals last week at the state competition at Blackstone Valley Tech. Bronze medals were won by Tyler Beatty with job interview plumbing, Sam Gray for early childhood education. Our silver, me silver medals are won by Jessica Johnson for auto refinishing, Lexi Holmes and Liz Cavanaugh for cosmetology. And for our gold medals, we have Abby Fernandez with commercial baking and Maria Baker was elected to a second term as a Skills USA Massachusetts State Officer. The Plymouth South High School and the Massachusetts State Track, Co State Track Coaches Association ho hosted over 900 athletes this past weekend at the freshman and sophomore invitational meet. We want to thank the coaches, athletes, parents, and administration for making it all an excellent event. And finally, on Friday and Saturday, Alex Godfrey, Melina Manick, and Julianne Morris participated in the Massachusetts Science and Engineering Fair at Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Mila Manick, mentored by Ms. Conroy and Ms. Den, earned honorable mention for her project. She also received a cash prize from the Cabot Foundation and awards from MIT Press and Harvard. In addition, she was the alternate winner of the Wentworth Institute of Technology $10,000 scholarship. Let me say that uh, you thanked us, but really it should be the other way around because mm. both of you, I'm blushing. both of you bring <laughs> bring a great deal of information that we wouldn't we wouldn't have access to. So that's really appreciated. But in addition to that, there have been times when we needed your opinions and your thinking on some on topics, and that was very valuable to us. So we thank you for all the time you've spent here. Thank mm. you very much. And another thing, too, and I know I don't know if I've had a chance to talk to Eddie yet, but I talked to Isabella that we're hoping maybe starting next year as a region, as a um, school committee region, of doing some kind of a convening for the students to get together and hash out some hot topics. Mm -hmm. And I know that I talked to you about it, Bella, about, you know, if it was too late maybe to squeeze it in this year, and it, we kind of figured it would be. Yeah. So I'm hoping that maybe you guys can come back and visit us next year if we of do it. Of course. Yeah. I, I think we're maybe even looking at doing it as more of like an orientation Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the beginning of the school year, getting mm -hmm. all the students together, similar to like a round table discussion that they do at the conference. Yeah. So um, we'll make sure that we get you back here because you guys did a great job for the last couple of years and I'm sure you'd be a great resource for the new ones coming in. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We're going to be close anyways. <laughs> Maybe if I come home, my mom will buy me stuff from my dorm. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. Uh, our first uh, presentation this evening is a school improvement plan. Dr. Maestas. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we have the school improvement plan from Indian Brook Elementary School. And we have uh, Principal Eric Manfredi. Uh, along with assistant principal uh, and team. So Erica, if you wouldn't mind introducing everyone, we have Courtney Tripoletti as assistant principal, 
and we have a number of people that our committee have seen uh, at the table before and um, well known around Plymouth. So Erica, if you could just announce your team. Good evening. Thank you for taking the time to listen to us <laughs> this evening. Let me introduce everyone. I'm Courtney Trefletti, assistant principal. Susan Page is our community representative that's on our committee. Jill Duggan is a grade four classroom teacher and Nancy Canducci is a grade five classroom teacher. We are missing our two parent members, Lisa DiBiasio and Grace Spencer. They were unable to attend this evening. So thank you for having us. Okay, am I flipping my slides? All right. So let me start by saying, you know, as we sat down, we reviewed the district's strategic plan for probably the hundredth time. <laughs> and, you know, it was really important for us to, to align as closely as we could. Clearly makes sense. So our three areas that we wanted to focus on were student uh, social and emotional growth of students, um, family and community engagement, as well as academic achievement. Those are in no order. <laughs> They're all equally as important. So I'm going to pass it along. Jill's going to start and talk about our first um, strategic objective, social emotional. Good evening. Um, the first, our first goal is, um, goes along right. Jill, do you want to hold that microphone? There's one right in front of you. Thank you. <laughs> Does it just? There you go. Well, that, that, I think that's it's mostly on. for cable, so you don't you won't hear the uh, you won't hear a speaker. Oh, wow! <laughs> it all works. <laughs> so our first objective goes right along with social emotional growth. Um, it is to create a safe and supportive environment that allows students to become independent problem solvers and productive members of the school community. Some of the things that we have done over the course of the year and um, previous years, um, this was our first year with the second step curriculum across all grade levels. We have been partnership, partnering with Gosnold Counseling Services. We have been um, doing PBIS assemblies. This year we did grade level assemblies, which was very, very effective. They were small and they really were able to incorporate a lot of student interaction within the assemblies. We also instituted splash awards to go along with um, our assemblies. We have a peer helper program, um, as well as a big friend, little friends program, and fifth grade kindergarten bus helper programs. Those are all kind of um, ways to have um, the older and younger sis students Get to, get, get to know each other and be supportive throughout the building. Um, we also have um, an OT sensory path that was new this year. And the OT person in our school has done a great job. She um, has all kinds of interesting things to engage students if they just need a couple of minutes to gather themselves or to refocus or to expend some energy. It's great to kind of have a little bit of um, downtime. Um, with that path. Some things that we would like to do going forward, um, next year we're going to administer and analyze the data of the SEL Universal Screener. Um, we are also going to continue with school-wide PBIS program as well as the Second Step program. We will be developing professional learning communities focus on more RTI options and um, professional development focused on um, social emotional learning. And these are the new matrices that we, excuse me, have put around the building. The um, darker blue is for grades K through two. Um, and the, um, the one on the right is for the older students. They have the basic principle of pride, performance, and power. Um, just how we expect our students to um, reach those goals. Throw in some pictures for you. So I'm going to pass it along to um, Nancy and Sue are going to share strategic objective too. So I'm going to start. Um, 
This strategic objective, too, is to increase family and community engagement. Um, this is a goal that we've had for the last few years, so we've already done a lot of things in this. Um, and this is to develop a clear line of communication between families and the larger school community, while also fostering a collaborative approach between the school families and surrounding communities. We have a very strong relationship with our PTA. Um, they did a fun run with our school this year that raised a lot of money for the kids and our building. Um, we are working on mm -hmm. making our outdoor classroom even better and improving um, our Emily's Garden. We already have a lot of communi uh, communication initiatives in place. Um, we've got the S'mores newsletter that comes out from the office. Um, they also post on social media and we have a Facebook page and Twitter updates. Um, we also use the Connect Ed phone calls. The lower grades use the, um, I think it's kindergarten, right? Kindergarten uses Seesaw and that's, um, it's a, a computer program that uh, the parents can get an app and it's a means of communication. They can send pictures of their, the students and they can also put updates like it's Patriot's Day tomorrow. Um, Class Dojo is the same kind of a thing that the upper grades use, um, and it's great for giving little, you know, reminders um, and also some pictures, because don't parents love those? Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of school-wide events. Um, we just did our literacy night, which um, was culminating our one school, uh, one book program. We did Charlotte's Web, just in case you didn't notice that. Oh. Uh, this fall, we did another one of our science nights, um, and we had our holiday fair and guest readers. Um, EdTV is a part of our school with, um, with the fifth graders joining in, and our robotics program is also a part of our school. Uh, we had a dodgeball tournament, which is a huge hit with the children, not so much the teachers, but the kids <laughs> love it. Um, we had, of course, our band, orchestra, and chorus concerts, um, and then our chorus actually sung at the Providence Bruins. How cool is that? Um, we had the Plymouth High School, um, this is the South, right? We only have South come and read to us, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, so we have South High coming to read uh, to the children just before Thanksgiving. Um, and then we've got lots of spirits, spirit days um, during the year to just get the kids involved. Um, we've got a play coming up this week. When is our play? Thursday night. Yes, come and see. Charlotte's Web. Charlotte's Web. Oh. It's a theme. It's a theme. Um, and then our fifth grade um, is going to have a carnal, carnival and a faculty basketball game. Ooh, another good one. Can't wait. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> oh, will I use this one? It's up to you. Oh, okay. I'll use this one. Now, throughout the upcoming school year, the implement, implementation of goal three to increase communication between the school and our parents first the classroom teachers will communicate with the parents weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, using whatever tool they're comfortable with, a newsletter, web page, or email. A new part is, secondly, the specialists will also communicate with parents on a monthly basis, again using whatever communication tool they feel comfortable with, to inform parents about the grade level expectations and curriculum in their specialist areas. Thirdly, at open house in the fall, parents will be introduced to the scope and sequence of curriculum areas at each grade level, as well as our PBIS matrices. Also at that night, parents will receive a trifold type of document outlining the scope and sequence presentation that they can have at home and refer to. And if they have a question, say at conference time or whatever, they can come and bring it and point to it and say, how does this match up with this? Now finally, in the spring of 2020, parents will complete a survey on the success of all these communication tools. And adjustments, if needed, can be made from the results of that survey. Thank you so much. So I'll be talking. Oh, great, those <laughs> photos. So I'll be talking about um, objective number three, to enhance the academic achievement of all students which is providing a high quality instruction across all content areas that promote 
independent strategic learners and prepare students to meet their expanding uh, goals of the 21st century. So some of the ways that we have already done this um, is, as Nancy mentioned earlier, our One Book, One School, Charlotte's Web this year. Um, in addition, we have administered the grade level math assessments to identify students for intervention, as well as the BAS reading assessments. Um, we will meet as, ch we will continue to meet um, with child study teams um, to analyze these results. Um, going forward, we will continue with professional development and school-wide programs for teacher collaboration. Um, and then although our plan is to enhance all academic areas, our focus next year is science across all grade levels. Um, some of the things we will put into place um, is grade level professional development, focusing on effectively implementing the next generation science standards. Um, we will also be looking at forming professional learning communities focused on creating a next um, generation K through five science standards vertical alignment document. Um, also, um, administrators will continue to conduct at least one administrative walkthrough during a science lesson. More mm -hmm. pictures. The, the middle one of Ms. Trifletti in the like fashion that. costume, I was hoping she'd wear it tonight, but <laughs> 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 we decided maybe not on our first one, maybe next year. <laughs> um, the last thing, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do it, I was hoping to show our Charlotte's Web video, and I don't think I have the link correctly, but if you haven't seen it, EdTV did a great little piece on our um, Charlotte's, our One School, One Book Day with a whole montage of kind of everything, all the craziness that was going on, including Gary holding a pig. Oh, <laughs> we saw that holding picture. Holding Wilbur. Yeah. To us. <laughs> so do you have any questions for us? I, we might. Let's see. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hunt? Um, I, like, I like your presentation. It's nice and concise and good. Um, I really, really like the communication plan because a, a lot of schools will come to us and say one of their goals is to communicate with more parents, but you actually s marked it out. You know, they have to do it this many times and there. I think that that's awesome because I, I know that everybody wants to do it, but it seems like you've got it actually structured out as to, to when and how to do it. So that's great. That's the plan. I mean, I know for myself, I, I need to you need a plan. <laughs> have, a, Absolutely. have a schedule or it's Absolutely. not going to happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. good, thank you. Uh, good presentation, uh, covered a lot, excellent. Uh, the, the other, the other uh, slide, uh, not slide, the other, I guess, handout that we received called details. I wanna, uh, I was reading through that, I like the outcome measures. I wanna, I, 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 uh, and I thought your, uh, your goals were pretty, were pretty bold, uh, in, in a good way. For example, on the SEL uh, measure, you going. You wrote that 10% of uh, the students showed a need in that area, and you want to reduce that that 10% by 20%. So it made me wonder because I don't even know what this instrument looks like. This SEL instrument looks like. It made me wonder. Many of the reasons that those children are in need have nothing to do with what happens during the day. True. They come to school with those problems. So I thought it was pretty courageous of you to feel that you could, and I mean this in the, in the nicest way, to reduce the need by 10% when a lot of the problems are happening outside this built, the school building. I, I think we all think, though, yes, there's not much you can do. You know, there are things we can do to support families. Is that we have our backpack program where we send food home. Gosnold has been a huge support with connecting us to some of those families and their needs. But I think the mo the, when they come to school, it needs to be a safe, nurturing place and we have seen such a difference in kids if they feel safe when they come to school so regardless of what's going on at home yeah we can't fix that <laughs> we can teach them the coping strategies in school mm -hmm. and that's that's what we really try and do I, I, I think that's 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 well said I've never seen this instrument this SEL instrument I, I'm really curious to what types of questions are on it so it's at some point I'd like to see a copy of that because I want to see it is what you're dealing with when you, what you're right. trying to work on right so yeah. maybe somebody can get that to me yeah. okay. any other questions or comments okay that was great thank awesome. you very much thank you, thank you.
Okay, now we have a status report from the uh, Parents Advisory Council for Special Education. Dr. Maestas? Yes, tonight we have uh, a report from the Special Education uh, Parent Advisory Council, and I'd uh, like to invite them to the table tonight. I know they have been very active, and uh, we did have um, the uh, CPAC uh, here last year, and they are here to report on their activities. Um, and uh, they've supplied a, a PowerPoint presentation for tonight, and they will be uh, uh, walking through that for us. Good evening and welcome. You. Glad you're here this evening. Thank you for having us. We need to continue. Yes, that's this. the one you need. Yeah. <laughs> Use that microphone. We were just wondering to change slides. Um, is it? Yes, so on that remote, there's a right arrow. You click the right arrow and it'll Thank advance. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, you need to hold that microphone as you speak. Thank that's you. for the TV. Thanks. So thank you for having us. Um, we are Plymouth CPAC, a Special Education Parent Advisory Council. Um, some of you we have had the pleasure of speaking with already, but for those that haven't, um, my name is Lindsay Quintel McEnroe, Amy Tenberg, and Jenna Quigley. We are all board members. Um, we are a parent-led volunteer group, but we are state mandated and since um, being on the board, we have really worked to um, serve as a liaison between parents in the district and administration. Um, we hear a lot of outreach from parents, um, problems, concerns, and we, we hear them out. We do our best to train parents and empower them, but also we want to take it a step further um, and communicate those needs um, and those problem areas to administration. <clears throat> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, thank you. So I already um, touched on that a little bit, but, oh, I'm so sorry. The second one is Jenna. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi. So um, we talked a little bit about who we are. I just wanted to talk about how um, maybe the board of the district can help us be successful. So I think one of um, what we currently do, it might be helpful for you to know that, is we meet monthly with the parents from the district. So we have a, a monthly meeting, and then we take that information and we meet with the head of the district, Stacy, and we talk about you know opportunities for improvement, um, programs, things like that. Um, we have a pretty strong web presence right now. We've just beefed it up a little bit. We have a new website. We use Facebook a lot to communicate with our parents. Um, we attend all the open houses in the new year to try to get parents to know that we're around and available as a resource. But I think even with all of that, we fall short um, in the visibility area. And that's, I think, where we're asking for help from the district. Um, you know, just a quick personal story. I moved here three years ago. I was struggling with the transition. My son's in the ASD program. I searched and searched, and I stumbled upon these ladies, thankfully, that helped me through a lot of navigating this difficult process that's special education. And I think it would have been really helpful to get this pamphlet when I joined the school district to say, hey, this is a resource for you as a parent and as you know, just a, a person in the community that may be struggling with this tricky process. So I think our ask for, um, from you guys and, and from the district is just help with that visibility and letting parents of, you know, with any need. I think we service all the children with any kind of different education path. So not just specifically I, kids on an IEP, but any parent know that we're here and we have some resources available to them. Um, so we have guided parents and assisted them through navigating the special education process. A few of the topics um, we have discussed during parent meetings this year um, are MCAS, MCAS supports, how to implement those, um, how to individualize them. Um, we focused a lot on the idea that it's important to really look at the whole child, um, not just academic performance, but social skills, ADLs, um, transition skills, which are all important. We have a lot of parents that reach out to us the night before an IEP meeting in a panic. <laughs> um, so the idea behind parent empowerment is we want to prepare them ahead of time before it gets into a crisis type situation. Um, so. These themes here that you see on this slide are things that we have worked on all year. We would like to continue to work on them. Um, we would welcome the um, district's involvement in helping us to provide parent training meetings. 
Um, we do have Jerry Cassell doing a social thinking um, presentation for us next. We would like to delve into that area a little bit more um, because I think parent training, from what we have heard, what we have seen, um, is definitely an area that could help improve um, the student's um, success. Um, transportation, I know it might seem strange to have a, a whole piece dedicated to this, but uh, a major change that has resulted in a lot of our parent feedback is the transition from Judco to Vanpool for student transportation. Um, that's a big, big change that happened. Um, and at the beginning of, of that transition, we did, CPAC did host Van Pool at the time um, to give them a chance to speak to parents, address concerns, et cetera. Um, we hoped for a relatively seamless transition, but unfortunately transportation issues are some of the most common parent complaints that we see right now. Um, it, it, while the process of driving students ho from home to school and back might seem simple on the surface, um, it really does require some acknowledgement of, of how unique the needs of those kids are and what an important role the drivers and the staff members play. Um, as you can see from the, the quote, you know, they, they, are, they open the door to that child's day, they close the door to end it. Um, so it really is an important sort of vibe. Um, for these guys and um, some of the incidents brought to our attention this year students arriving school at school late leaving early um, pickups and drop-offs happening at off times without parent notification um, van accidents or breakdowns without parent notification incompatible students assigned to the same van um, driver commentary that escalated student behavior potential driver smoking in the vans um, things that that um, again, just, just make a little bit of difficulty with that seamless transition in, into school and out of school for these guys. Um, so we just, our recommendation as the CPAC is, is just to really hold Van Poole to a high standard of care for our students and um, just monitor them for improvement so that we know by the time that the current contract is up um, that they have to meet a high standard with us in order to continue working with us. So I just want to read this quote out loud because I think it captures the essence of special education to some degree. Um, behavior change in a student doesn't happen because we write it in a plan. It happens because we change our behavior. The miracle isn't in the document. It's in the professionals that carry out that plan with fidelity. And I think that's really important to remember as, as we kind of talk about this. So I think, you know, we talked to Stacy, and we do understand that the district is troubling, struggling with staffing issues. Um, and I think just being mindful that consistent, knowledgeable staff is crucial for these kiddos' success. Um, and in addition to that, the staff that um, currently exist, I think providing some education around special education. So um, even if they're not in the special education world, but they work in the school, I think it's really helpful to have, you know, um, you know adequate communication, like um, those ladies just really eloquently spoke to how important that is. I think in the special education world, same thing. It's really, really important to have that communication. Um, awareness of inclusion practices, effectively writing an IEP, which is a, just a whole world <laughs> in and of itself. Um, understanding behavior interventions and state guidelines, knowing the laws around special education, and being able to capture and record meaningful data is really important for these kiddos. So, you know, I think some of the parent feedback has been, it would be great for the district to provide additional training. Um, and as a community, I think we really need to support our teachers and make sure that they have the resources and the educational um, opportunities and the staff ratios to be able to um, execute on some of this stuff. Um, and we'll just try and keep this brief and wrap up our presentation by saying that you guys, of course, know um, that this school year's theme is This Is Me, inspired by the powerful song from The Greatest Showman. I was personally honored and proud to have two children on that Plymouth North stage singing that inspiring anthem for our teachers in August. It was a beautiful, beautiful day. And um, I'm equally mindful of the message behind the song because I have a child with a disability in special education. 
This Is Me is about more than personal pride and embracing individuality. It's about fighting for acceptance and empowerment as a person who has differences, um, who may not meet the same expectations as everyone else. So we're here with you today to speak on behalf of the children in our schools who need your help to reach their full potential um, so that they can stand on their world stage and say, look out, because here I come, and I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Thank you very much, and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Mr. Mark. Um, you mentioned the issues with uh, transportation and van pool. Did you see any improvement from the beginning to the year to now, or has it been... I think there have been some. I know Stacy has been working really closely with them and um, trying to kind of... Um, solve some of those questions. I think some of it has to do with um, getting a little bit more of a, a distinctive line of communication. What, you know, if you have a concern, who to call first. Um, I know the last time we met with Stacy, we discussed that we weren't sure if, if Vanpool was keeping quite the same records that Stacy was, I feel bad, I should say Dr. Rogers. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> no offense. <laughs> um, it, it, that we weren't sure if there was consistency between the records they keep and the records you keep, and and making sure that um, nothing is winding up getting uh, under uh, underreported or confused in that way. But I know um, I know Stacy has been working with them on that, and I think it's I think it there definitely have been some problems that have been solved. I think the the consensus within the community is, is this going to be the thing now where every week there's another problem or are we going to be able, be able to establish sort of a baseline of most of the time we're good, occasionally there's an issue. Make sense? <laughs> Ms. Patcher. I just wanted to say thank you guys for all that you do. I'm so glad that you're here in front of us to give a presentation because what you, got, you do is so important. And I also want to apologize for not being able to make a meeting yet this year, so I apologize for that. <laughs> and it brings up, and I think I've brought this up every year for the last three years, that I think it's really important that we have, I know I'm an unofficial liaison, but I think we need an official liaison to the feedback. I bring it up all the time. I just think that they do the same work that some our school um, councils do. It's just an, a, a district council in some ways. So I'm just going to put that out there again mm -hmm. for our discussion. It's We're happy to have anybody come hang with us who, <laughs> who is, if you are invested in our children, you get a seat at the table, my friend. <laughs> well, no, I, I think we'll follow I up. I think we'll follow up on that. Because I know I've brought it up, I think, every year. But I do think it's mm -hmm. really important. And, you know, if I can make their meetings, I try to. But my work schedule has been a little crazy this year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're talking to people with uh, children with disabilities. We understand <laughs> the crazy schedules. Yes. It's okay. Ms. Haywood. Um, I just want to, uh, so your, <clears throat> your presentation was awesome. And I did have the pleasure of meeting um, most of you <laughs> um, uh, uh, last year. Uh, and I want to say um, that I actually agree with Michelle in terms of having a specific accounts or specific liaison for um, special ed. Um, two, I just wanted to ask, I guess, some questions. Um, in terms of visibility, what exactly is it that you need so I think one of the things that would be helpful, we have this great pamphlet that the district has made for us, which we love, except for um, it, it's not, I don't think it's getting out to the population. And I know there's some privacy things that we have to navigate with something like this, but I just think um, even, you know, website presence, um, a any kind of thing that we would do to promote anything else. So, you know, we do a lot of promotion of school activities. I think, you know, promoting the meetings, um, just giving this to everybody or anybody who seems like they're struggling or needs a 504 or even has a meeting to talk about that. I think this might be helpful to get um, in that packet of information. Um, also, too, with the um, parent trainings, can you, like, expand on that? Um, so we have crowdsourced a bit um, about what topics parents would like to see, um, feeding um, concerns, ADL skills have been a big concern, um, transition for our older students, which um, the problem is I think sometimes people start thinking about that a little bit later than they could. Um, it's important to be mindful of that early on, so we would love to have somebody come in and talk about that process, what that looks like. Um, 
we'd be happy to hear any additional ideas. But I think starting with social thinking is great because it is a district-wide program. It's in most of our schools, um, if not all. Um, so that's what we were thinking. But the problem is, and it relates to the visibility, if people don't know about us, you know, it, it kind of, it's a little bit worrisome to schedule somebody to come and present um, and not have the, the audience that we'd like to have. Sure. Um, the other piece of that I think that would be helpful is the fact that, you know, we have to bear in mind, I mean, we, we've done a fair amount of, of research um, as a part of this group because it's just a necessary evil. Um, but we, we do try to bear in mind certainly that most of the parents, they enter this world of special education or of disability. Most of them have no idea what the process is involved, um, what special education looks like, and there really isn't a huge place for that in 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 school systems that we're one of the few places that has a little bit of an in in that way that maybe can provide that because obviously um you know teachers are teaching and and administrators are doing their job and and um in terms of of parents it's it we always feel bad i know when a parent comes to us and says you know i have to figure this out and I don't even know where to begin because I'm not a teacher or I'm not, you know, a therapist or a nurse or a doctor or what, someone who has any kind of background. So we might be able to provide a little bit of that at least as, as a jumping off point if we have opportunities to say, hey, you know, if, if, if you have a child whose MCAS is coming up and you're not sure how to approach getting them through that, come and we'll have an expert here and we'll, we'll chat about it, you know. Okay. Ms. Hunt. Um, I, I, I totally understand. I mean, even like me as a parent that knows the school system, it's, it's hard. And I can't even imagine what it would be like for a parent coming in brand new that didn't know anything and needed a little extra. And I'm, I'm still thinking about your communication and your pamphlet. And I'm like, I'm wondering, you know, when, when you enter the district and you start that process, so that should be the time that you are made aware of your committee. Um, I was in Framing, uh, Framingham School this morning and they had a parent resource center and with my PTA hat, that's like the Cadillac for me is when schools have those kind of resource centers or libraries for parents. But again, you gotta get the parents to know to go in there um, to, to do that. Like they have like almost like a library for parents mm -hmm. where they can get, can get resources. But, um, and I know you said you go to all the open houses, but see, the, the students are already in the s school by then. Like, you need to get them right when they register for school. I don't know if it's at kindergarten or new students coming in. Um, yeah. yeah. So can you, is there any way you can hook up with, like, the PTAs in those schools and maybe, or when they do a kindergarten event, like the early childhood did a fair this year. Mm. And... Well, you, I don't know if you were there or not, but maybe you should have had, you could have had a table there where it was all students. There were students there actually registering for kindergarten. So I'm just thinking we need to like go backwards a little bit to get them when yeah, they're just entering Yeah, we can absolutely try whatever you think would be helpful. I mean, that's part of why we thought if there was at least a baseline system, whether it's putting this pamphlet in every registration packet, whether it's um, again, making them available at every IEP or 504 meeting, um, just something that would yeah, be that, a little bit of a jumping I was off. Go with it because when with every I, uh, IEP meeting, whether it's the annual review or reevaluation or a 504 accommodation plan, paperwork is going back and forth between yes. the home and the school. Right. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you guys. And there should be a personal that. meeting with the team. We were saying the same thing. I think the initial evaluation time mm -hmm. when you're. Yeah, I mean, if this, if we had enough of these that that could become part of the standard packet, I think that would be a great start. Time to do it because it doesn't all, you know, and the attention. And doing it early yeah. Yeah. Good, the attention but, you know, it. you could have a four-year-old who's going through that process for the first time in, you know, January. So how do you ensure that all right. families are getting that information? Yeah, I think that would be the best way around. An easy way to confidentially share that information, too, so that it's just going home with the families that are going mm -hmm. through that that experience for the first time. So Chris, let me right. ask you, well, that's the only concern we have with the open house sometimes. Excuse me. Who would be responsible? Uh, Dr. Rogers and I can have a conversation about how to how to streamline that because, you know, that's going to happen at, you know, during team meetings at, at, at different different schools so we can mm -hmm. make sure that we have a 
a process for that to, to take so place. I, so I think that you folks can leave this meeting tonight knowing that as soon as we can, uh, some communication will go with each 504, each annual review, each initial, and each uh, reevaluation that tells the, the family about the pack. So you can go home tonight knowing that's going to happen. Thank you. And now, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> yeah. Because you're going to be getting a lot of phone calls and a lot of people are going to want help. Hopefully we'll get more volunteers too. Mm -hmm. Let's there you go. <laughs> Let's I, I will say in meeting, um, in meeting with them um, last year, <laughs> this, this group is probably the most informed. Mm -hmm. um, it, just the, the amount of information the information that they had, um, their perspectives, I was blown away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I, I think they they're up to the to task. They have yeah. to be. They've got so much more to navigate. Yeah. And actually, before when you were talking to re re referencing Dr. Uh, Dr. Rogers as Stacy, I like to hear that because <laughs> it tells me that the communication between your group and, and, and her mm -hmm. office goes very well. She's been it very open to meeting with us. It's been great. Sure. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Glad to hear that. Other mm -hmm. questions or comments? <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you for having, thank us. You for having us. We will hold our next agenda item until our uh, yes. senator and state reps arrive. Uh, just somebody make sure we notice that they're here when they get here. Uh, and move on to old business. Uh, okay. Uh, anything under old business we have to bring up this evening? I've already announced that we will review the whole thing in a next meeting or two. But oh, anything yeah, to bring I up we tonight? Do it today, no. And we're not doing it tonight. next no. next oh, meeting. The I'm sorry. The twentieth. The, the next meeting. The next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. A new business committee members. I can't think of okay. Seeing no hands. Uh, the superintendent's report, Dr. Maestas. Yes, this evening I have uh, some very uh, good things to announce. I'll start with the first item, and I know uh, Mrs. Burgess uh, probably doesn't want me to announce this, but I'm going to announce it anyway. Um, she, uh, Ms. Burgess, has been um, nominated and is going to be receiving uh, the Crystal Apple uh, Award for Excellence in Education by her church. And um, I just want to highlight that Ms. Burgess is, um, is going to be receiving this honor. And I think there is no better beacon of educational uh, effort in our district than, than Margie. She's done a wonderful job for many years, and she's being recognized by her church. That's going to be May 15th, 2019. I know some of us have received uh, an invitation. And Margie, we will be there to, um, to embarrass you or uh, <laughs> do a few other things to to allow others to, to recognize you. So uh, honored to, to have the opportunity to be there and uh, uh, congratulations on that. Thank you. While you're there, you'll probably meet some teachers from the system because it's really a teacher appreciation night and dinner. That is wonderful. Teachers in the system. And um, also the thing for it, for me that the important part of the award is that it's a, a, this is the beginning of the award. Wow. It's going to move forward and be an award every year, mm -hmm. but in my name. Wow. And uh, so for, for someone in the community. Yeah. That's wonderful, Margie. Yeah. Thanks. That's wonderful. So I'm, I'm glad that we could highlight that. And I uh, just want the community to know that uh, we have some, uh, some leadership on this board uh, across, the, across the table. And it's wonderful to see one of our committee uh, getting recognized for that, that leadership. And um, I had the opportunity last week to go to Yom HaShoah. It was a, a commemoration of the Holocaust and, and other acts of genocide in, in the 20th century. And that was uh, put on by the Interfaith Clergy Council and No Place for Hate. And it was uh, a, a great evening. Uh, we had uh, student performances. Um, and they, you know, just so proud for our students to be part of that uh, and to be able to experience um, that message of um, you know the, the the theme for for this year uh, had everything to do with free speech uh, and also free society uh, and one of the things that I was left with was is really um, understanding that you know free speech is important uh, free society is important but we also need to understand that um, and that's one thing I, I wish I, I would have had the opportunity to talk to kids about afterwards is it's it's how you approach those opportunities and how you do that with, with, with respect 
and um, an understanding. I think sometimes in society we, we, we've lost that. But I think the opportunity for our students to have uh, free speech is, is very important. Um, and we're, we're excited about that opportunity for our, our students. Um, the the uh, next item is a reminder of uh, uh, Harbor Academy. Uh, Harbor Academy tour is on May 16th, uh, 2011, and uh, that'll be um, from 10 to 11 o'clock. Uh, it's, it's May 16th from 10 to 11, excuse me. And um, one of the um, beautiful parts about being on 11 Lincoln Street is um, the central office staff, the staff that are now in 11 Lincoln Street, uh, received an invitation from classrooms at Nathaniel Morton to go read at the school. Oh. So we had our support staff, everyone across the table here. Uh, I, they probably had 30, without a doubt, uh, people from our office go over and read to kids at the Morton, which uh, was absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed myself. I read in two classrooms, and um, I shared with the students uh, in fifth grade. That I was telling them a little bit of, of the history of 11 Lincoln Street, and I shared with them that I had a, a photo in my office of the uh, Plymouth High School class of 1916. And that photo was actually signed by every member of that class. And I did a little math from, for them. I said, well, how old is that picture? And do you think, how many people do you think in town right now are still alive um, that are in that picture? And they were, they did a little bit of mental math and they were like, you know, that's, that's they realize that that building is really old and there are a lot of graduates. So I talked about the photos inside the gym uh, of a lot of people uh, that come by and want to see those photos because their grandparents are in there, great grandparents are, are on those photos. But it's amazing to be in a school system where we have such history. And there are a lot of, if you look at the, at the and I'll, I'll share it with you when you come over to Central, um, the names on the back of that, um, photo uh, on that class of 1916, uh, the former president of Massachusetts uh, uh, Community College was in my office the other day and I showed it to him and he turned it around and his great grandmother, no, his, his um, great aunt was uh, signed and, and, and she was actually in that photo and it was just by happenstance that he had the opportunity to see that and it's, it's pretty heartwarming to see people see their relatives and they graduated. So I said, I guess you really are Plymouthian, you know, and <laughs> absolutely. So there's a lot of Plymouth names on, 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 on these uh, photos and um, what we're gonna do with these, these photos is, is keep the framing on front, but we're gonna actually put a second frame underneath the photo so people can actually see who the people uh, are that actually sign off on that, on that graduation picture. I have the class of, um, of, of 1916 and the class of 1922. I don't know where the other ones are, but all I know is I have those two. My mother graduated in 1935. Uh, well, we don't have that one, Marge, but I do have <laughs> the school committee minutes from 1935, so maybe, uh, maybe she's in that. So. <laughs> but also, the other thing when you were talking about um, going over to Nathaniel Morton, um, in the past, quite a few years ago now, I, I have two from it, but they, the Nathaniel Morton, painted in an art class, yeah. little pictures like this, crazy little pictures, but I have them because they add some color and happiness. And um, so it'll be really nice when it's the school <laughs> department that they're putting a whole bunch of them out for people to take when they come in. Yes. It's very nice, so it, it would, that would be great. So what we're gonna do at uh, 11 Lincoln Street is the first floor will be student artwork. And like we did at, at, um, at 253 South Meadow Road, the second floor will be photos of the history of Plymouth schools. Okay. So we can see old buildings. I have um, Bill, Bill, Bill Cohen shared with me a, a, an archive of old photos. We're gonna frame those along with other photos that we have. What's pretty interesting about this photo that I have uh, with the class of uh, 1916 is they're sitting in front of the building that we're in. And that was when they were going to school there, which is pretty interesting that now we're back there. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah. there's some great history there to be shared. That's great. That's um, be. And, um, just want to give everyone an update on Oldbury Street. Uh, I met with um, Jonathan Beter, the DPW director this morning, and um, it looks like the work is going to begin on um, the Sandwich Warren uh, Ave area. 
um, and also the, the South Street area. So both sides of Overy Street, they're going to work on those sections first. They will not start working on Overy Street itself until after school is out. Uh, they want to minimize that disruption during school hours. So uh, you, you've already, if you've driven down, um, you know, Warren Ave, Sandwich, and, and also on South Street during morning commute, you've already noticed some level of disruption. And, and you, you'll start to see some, some disruption there on those intersections more than you will on Oberry. But just getting there might be somewhat of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, that's that's a that's a as of this morning. Come up Nook Road and use use uh, the school for a cut yeah. through. Uh, well, you, they've been doing that since we built it. So, <laughs> yep. Ms. Badger, has that been causing any delays for students getting to school in the morning? Not yet. But anything uh, in in our in our uh, school um, setting. Um, Students probably will already start claiming that's the reason why they're late. So, <laughs> all right, Dr. Sorensen, back to you. Questions? Okay. Uh, health curriculum. Yeah. Um, the only update we have since our last meeting is we're happy to say that we have posted for additional elementary health educators. Excuse me, that was off. <laughs> some reason. Um, since our last meeting, we've posted for additional health educators, so we're happy to say that we'll be um, pr obtaining the staff to have a K-5 to five, um, health education for the upcoming school year, so we're really excited about that. So um, we hope to get those applications in soon, start that process. We've identified a couple of the principals that will lead that, that search, and um, we'll have some additional teachers for the upcoming school year. Ms. Badger. Question, sorry. Um, can, do you have a, a date when we're going to get like the a draft? I know we've seen the second steps and everything and how it's, you know, flows from grade to grade and what's happening, but how we're going to implement it. I know obviously it's over a course of probably three years to get it to where we really want it to be, but do we have some sort of idea when you're going to have, if we're going to do it in August at our retreat or whenever we have that? Yeah, uh, my recommendation would be to try, because what I'm trying to do is we're working on, so we're obviously we're working on the curriculum now, but it's really important, in my opinion, that as we're hiring these teachers, that they're a part of that process too. So, um, and as I said, I've said in previous meetings, a lot of the like deep um, invested curriculum work that we do with all departments is during the summer because our teachers are available. So our health educator has been working with our consultant um, when she has the time to do that and it's really hard because she's teaching all day so we're trying to do that as much as we can and she's been focusing on the grade levels that she serves but we're also trying to do that at the same time with our K to K to three um, but as we're adding staff it's really important to have them be a part of that process I can certainly provide you um, a scope and sequence of what that will look like for our health education so I'm happy to to go over it in depth during the retreat I think if you'd like that and maybe we can even invite some folks if they're available to have some conversation about that but I, I think that I in my opinion if if you all would be um, open to that I think that would be the best venue to do that because it would give us time to really to make those fine tunes um, and revisions to the curriculum because um, as you heard tonight our, our teachers are doing some of the second steps so it's identifying the pieces that will stay with the teachers you know prioritizing the pieces that the health educators will do and then there's other um, components and strands of health education in addition to the SEL that our health educators will be doing so being able to map that out um, involve the teachers that we're hiring in that process too is really important but then by August we'll have that so that we can share that with all of you then if that would you know if that would be suitable okay. and uh, my thinking is that you know we've worked out our personnel or we're working out our personnel component of right. this curriculum and then we're going to work out the actual curriculum in J uh, July mm -hmm. probably or early August then we'll, then we'll have both pieces in place right. to discuss at the retreat correct so I see it okay any other questions on the health curriculum okay As soon as uh, our state senator gets here, we will take our representatives and state senator. He's not here yet. Vinny didn't come in yet. Not yet. Not yet. So we'll move on to the next item, which is retirements. 
Um, yes, we have three retirements to share tonight. Um, Barry Levy, a culinary teacher at South High, 26 years of service. Um, Richard Oliveira, who's a second shift custodian, um, 10 years of service at South Elementary School. And Kathleen White, an art teacher, um, currently at Indian Brook Elementary School after 16 years of service. On behalf of the Plymouth School Committee, I congratulate these individuals on their retirement and thank you for their years of service to the Plymouth Public Schools. Thank you. And I'll be going to the retirement lunch. Yes, <laughs> in a couple weeks. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Morgan, correspondence. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Chairman, we have four correspondence this evening. Um, a donation grant recipient letter to Manumet Elementary from American Tower Foundation. Uh, Management Elementary was chosen for a 2019 foundation grant after being nominated by American Tower employee Paul Bergendahl, if I didn't mispronounce that. Um, and three thank you letters from Allison Reardon uh, to the Plymouth Garden Club for their generous contributions to the district uh, fit wide fifth grade curriculum uh, to the uh, St. Vincent de Paul. Um, Society for Camp Intervention Scholarships granted to Plymouth students in need to attend this camp this summer, and to Mr. Olivia at Captain John Boats for gifting tickets to a whale watch, which were given to high school students at North and South enrolled in the Oceanography and Environmental Science program. All righty, thank you. Uh, that grant was pretty substantial. Can somebody share with us uh, that? Was that? The, the grant was um, the one from uh, the, the uh, tower company. That was $13,000, $17,000. $17, dollars 17, and, and just, Dr. Sturgeon, to, to that point, you know, um, we're very fortunate that we have a lot of organizations that support the school system. Um, this grant for Manma Elementary School was $17,000. And uh, it's, it, it was, uh, the grant was written to be able to uh, purchase additional technology uh, for the school. The principal wrote the grant and were able to, to get that. And uh, the Captain John Boats, uh, uh, Bob Avila, who, who actually owns Captain John, is a friend of the district and calls me up uh, once a year and says, hey, uh, I want to give a boat. Um, can you populate it? So talk with Allison Reardon. Uh, sometimes it's a fifth grade uh, distribution, sometimes it's a high school. Uh, have some marine biologists on board and he takes them out and they saw uh, whales, dolphins, and I don't know, they, they had such a great, from my understanding, it was a, a very good experience for our kids. A little bit rainy that day, mm. but um, it's something that, uh, it was calm though, it was calm. It, yeah. It, it's something that, um, that, that we have a great opportunity to experience here in our community. That's excellent, that's excellent. Okay, um, we have the honor tonight to have our state representatives, Kathy Lanatra, Matt Moratori, and our state senator, Vinnie Di DiMacito, have been willing, agreed to be here this evening and help us understand where we are at the state level. Could you please come down and join us at the table? Um, let's go to it and we'll say. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for being here. Did, did uh, just a, do, do you think we might want to have the MTA uh, yes, representative Tom, as well? Maybe Tom, Tom Pinto might want to join us as well. He's going to come down. Okay. And okay. Thank I'm you. I'm going to give these uh, our reps a chance to Thank speak, you. and then I'm going to invite Tom down. Thank you. So perhaps you folks can bring us up to date a bit, and then we have questions. Is it, does this work? Yeah, that's for the TV. Yep. Okay. Okay. Well, th thank you for having us. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be here. Um, we've had the opportunity to kind of, well, at least I have had where I represent from Falmouth to Pembroke, a lot of school committees are doing this and asking us what is going on <clears throat> because of the fact that there's been a lot of conversation right now about Chapter 70, the Promise Act, and clearly there's a, um, there's a sentiment that they're doing something. Um, just to give you a sense of what I'm seeing, though, is that they are doing something, but the goal is to address the uh, English language learners, the uh, uh, achievement gap, uh, and areas which, just from my experience, and again, here's, here's my challenge, is that um, as a uh, representative of this area, 
the significant amount of dollars that we're seeing put into uh, the Chapter 70 formula doesn't necessarily move the needle that much here. And it's and, and again, this is throughout the entire in, into the entire uh, area. However, in the Lowell's, Lawrence's, Fall Rivers, New Bedford's, it moves it significantly. Um, that's because of the foundation budget review formula that came out and the recommendations that came from there were really to address those issues. And so um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that you're seeing a lot of money put into this. The problem is is that it, it's not proportionate. So what we, we've tried to do uh, in this delegation is to try to address the per pupil rate uh, specifically because we feel like that helps this area more than others and that's where my focus is um, just because our you know our job is to make sure uh, that you have as much resources as you possibly can get to try to effectuate you know a positive education educational experience here so um, and a long way around it I, I say this to prepare you for the fact that I think <coughs> I do believe you're going to see education be a huge priority. I do believe you'll see a lot of money going into it. I don't believe it's going to have it move the needle as much in this area because of the way the foundation budgets. I'm sure you all know this. You've, you've, you've studied it. I'm just giving you the perception. I don't see that changing. Everything I've seen, every meeting, I just was uh, I was just down here where uh, Jason Lewis, the chairman of education, uh, was down on the Cape with Julian Sear, and they came down and, you know, all the conversations were around this very topic. Uh, we were there Friday night till like six o'clock at night going over this. But everything I'm hearing is that it is not going to move the needle in our region as much as we would like and you know, really go after those English language learners and those, uh, who, those in the achievement gap and obviously financially uh, disadvantaged people. So, so that's kind of my perspective uh, of what I'm hearing. Uh, I want to turn it over to either Matt or Kathy, I, I, ladies before gentlemen. Or okay. I'm just probably going to say what Matt and I discussed on the way here. There are five bills that were filed. Um, they did have a hearing on the March 22nd. They're still in committee. So, you know, I'm hearing the same things that Senator DiMacito was hearing. That's what we're discussing. I have six towns in this area. And it's the same situation here but I'll hand it over to Matt. Yeah, thank you so much for having us here tonight for this. It's really an important discussion. And I think the, uh, the good news is, is that we're having a discussion. Uh, I think a few years ago there was really no discussion about it and schools were getting what they were getting and that's it. But we're hearing it from, from everywhere throughout the Commonwealth. Everyone is talking about it. Uh, as Kathy said, there are, there are five bills that are, uh, that are out there now that have been heard already. Um, as the senator said, nothing's really going to help us at this point, but at least it's a it's a it's a starting point, it's a talking point. In the house budget that we just passed a couple of weeks ago, we put an extra 218 million dollars in the budget for education, and it puts the per pupil cost from 20 dollars to 30 dollars at this point. Uh, so we're hoping the senate will at least do that, so it brings it up a little bit. But I, I don't, and I, I agree with the senator. I don't I don't think we're going to see too much significant things happening in this session. Um, but again, it's being talked about, and I think we'll see uh, some more happening uh, down the road, maybe hopefully by the next session, uh, to help communities like ours, because there are more communities like ours that have issues. And I think Plymouth, uh, the, just the unfunded mandates alone are close to, what, $18, 20000000 million? Mm -hmm. um, and that's significant for a community like ours, and, and it's important that we address it. So, um, But, you know, whatever you all can do to help us as well, we're all in this together, I think really goes a long way. Okay, uh, thank you. We appreciate your opening statements, and we have a lot of topics that we want to touch with you. I want to invite Mr. Pinto down to the table, please. Dr. Maestas, if you want to start, please. Yeah, just um, I know we've all talked about this, and, and, and any time we were together, it seems like we we're always talking about funding. And I think one of the most difficult pieces that we have, I, I've been going around the school district, and, and I've, I've had staff meetings to explain the budget to our, our staff. I've been doing it for the last 11 years and every year it's something similar as far as what the message that I give our staff is. Uh, you know, this year we, we experienced a, a $3 million budget increase and $3 million budget increase for us is just same level of service. 
That means that that is our fixed costs that are just carrying us from one year to the next. So this year is the first year that we were in operating budget, um, not including benefits. We, we hit $100 million. So we were 97 last year, 100 million uh, this year. We'll be 103 million next year. And that's, that's without even, that's no new programs other than us doing um, program analysis to move staff where openings, you know, like health, we're, we're doing a health model change and uh, we're doing that. And I think one of the hard parts for us and, and, and you hear from the community all the time is whatever we don't get in state aid is going to go right to the tax base. And that's where we start to see those increases. And that's why people are, you know, at us all the time because we're the source of some of those increases. So, uh, and, you know, uh, Friday, I think uh, Matt and I and Vinny were at a, um, a presentation at South Middle. And I think we all came to the conclusion that if we add programs, it'd be nice if we had some level of money that comes along with those new programs. Because when you take a look at the superintendent's checklist from 11 years ago when I started to today and take a look at all of the things that have increased, um, you know, as far as our responsibility, they're, they're pretty heavy. Um, we'll, we do it and we, we know it needs to be done. The, the high majority of things on that list are good things for us to really have an education. They're monitoring, they're ensuring that kids are taken care of at different levels. We, we really uh, welcome the opportunity to do those things. The problem is, is the general public doesn't really understand that that's caused an increase for, um, it's, it's diminished capacity in some areas uh, because it's the same people doing the same work. Uh, but we've, we never really have received any kind of support to be able to make those things tangible in our district. So um, I am um, uh, concerned about, about, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years down the road if this trajectory doesn't shift at some point. Because I envision the day where, um, you know, Plymouth hasn't had, um, you know, these difficult um, meetings, town meetings like we had when I first came here where, you know, we, we had um, some difficult struggles between the town and the school department over cutting budgets at percentages, which is something that I really don't want to see happen in Plymouth, but um, unless there's some relief in the future, it's going to make it difficult. So that's that point. And then um, I think the second point is um, the, the mode that we're in at, in education today is causing us to be extremely creative and think out of the box about how we implement programming and how we change our school system. Every school system in Massachusetts, for that matter, across the country, can be a lot more pro progressive, and we need to be. In order for us to meet the needs of kids, not of today, but of tomorrow, we need to morph, we have to change. And the problem that you have is some of these changes, um, not necessarily for Plymouth, but, but education in general, it, they're very costly because it's transition in staff, it's going after, if we want to focus on STEM, and we try to go out and hire uh, a physics teacher or a robotics teacher or an engineering teacher, we're not going to get them for what we pay teachers. If we want to have a, a, a paradigm shift uh, in, in education, we're, I believe that we need to refocus the importance of what the modern education system looks like. And I think, um, most communities are, are really concerned about what that, that dollar amount is. And that, that puts us at a, we're very restricted in what we can do. So it takes a lot of effort from school systems. We've been somewhat um, adaptive to how we look at our programming. We're gonna have to work even harder in the future to be able to look at how we grow our programs to meet the needs of the kids of the future. I think what has driven the Plymouth Public Schools in the last seven, eight years are having two, two brand new buildings that we actually revamped our programs to meet the needs of the kids and the programming came with the building. If we didn't have those opportunities, I don't know that our school system would be where it's at today with the kind of some of the progressive programs that we've all talked about. So I think Plymouth has had the opportunity to have those, those transitions because of these buildings. I'd be afraid of where we would be today if we didn't have that because I know funding would have been extremely difficult. Uh, and the last point, I think, I think you saw how hard it was when we got full day K. I mean, it, it was a campaign. And that was 1.4 million. 
I mean, that was, it was a all out campaign that we went out and, and you know, it, that's what we have to do anymore in education. It would be nice if, if we got more federal and state dollars to be able to infuse these school systems that need the money so badly. And it's a burden, it's becoming more and more of a burden on our community. I'm receptive to our community because the tax rates are, are going up because the needs of the communities are exp expecting, I don't think anybody wants our school system to not offer more programs. They want more. And that's where our challenge is. And, and we're up to the challenge. It's just, um, it's become more and more difficult. So, uh, Dr. Sorensen, I, I, I know that's probably not um, what, what uh, we're here I'm to focus Mr. on. So in a moment to speak. But I just want to tell you that I personally appreciate that there are economically disadvantaged communities, and you named them before. And it makes sense that those communities get the help they need. That's a given. Uh, so we all understand that. But as you're hearing from Dr. Meyesis, and you'll hear from us as we go on, uh, our needs are increasing more and more. Uh, and those two schools really helped. And we're not, we're, we're not ungrateful. But we watch our needs increase more than our dollars, much more than our dollars. But we'll get to that in a moment. Mr. Pinto. <coughs> Uh, I appreciate you allowing me to come to speak, and you know I think this is a you know once in a generation opportunity to, to fight for education. Um, you know, as president of the EAPC, you know my main priorities are obviously you know kind of like the uh, United States of Plymouth and Carver. So you know that's what I want to fight for, and uh, but I also want to fight for education in general. Um, I think if we look at the three major bills, the the Promise Act, the uh, the big the Governor Bill, the Tucker Bill. I think all the numbers would show that the Promise Act are going to infuse the most dollars into education across the state. Now, again, for our concerns, you know, the per pupil expenditure, um, I know the Promise Act, if fully funded to this bank, would give $50 per student. I believe um, one of our, you know, social representatives actually pushed uh, for, for $100 per student. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yeah. Cutler. Yeah. So I mean, yes, I I, I think we we are in a uh, unique opportunity right now that um, it's being discussed, like you said, by everybody. I was just at the uh, the state conve the state annual meeting this weekend, and it, for for two days, and it you know was the main topic. Uh, we're talking about May 16th uh, coming to the state house. Uh, we you guys allowed me to discuss that last week, so I would just ask. I know you know obviously getting these bills through our time of compromise and whatnot, but I think also it's, it's, it's our duty as people who support education in communities that it's also our opportunity to, uh, to fight for education. So we're not, you know, we're fighting down the road. So, you know, I, I again reach out and I ask everybody coming up, you know, these sessions, let's, in the community watching, let's, let's, let's push forward, let's, let's fight for, for the best bill to move forward so that students across the state can can receive the best education possible. And I, and I know we do a great, unique job here in Plymouth and, you know, as we said, discussed. So, again, I appreciate always the opportunity to talk and come down here. Thank you. And I appreciate, you know, our, our elected leaders here. They are, you know, they are a great group. They are very accessible. They, you know, we, we have, I think I have meetings planned with them <laughs> coming up down the road. So, so that, that, it, that's nice that they were able to attend, and, and I do appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to see what com committee members now. M Ms. Hunt. Um, I know uh, with the Promise Act, I know um, Representative Lonatra and Moratora, you have both signed on to it. I don't, you have not yet. Right. Okay. Um, and I know you say that it, a lot of it doesn't uh, involve us, but one of the big parts of it, too, is special education. And we know that that grossly affects us, and it hurt us a lot. And a lot of it has to do with out-of-state um, or out-of-district placement. We're at up over $150,000 a student to do that. Um, also ELL, our ELL prop population is growing and our low income mm -hmm. population is growing too. So I think to say that it really doesn't affect us is inaccurate. Um, and I know that most of the educational associations of all of the bills that are out there right now are supporting the Promise Act. Um, and one of the things is, is, you know, we keep saying it's not going to happen yet, it's not going to happen yet. And, you know, I worked really closely with Senator Ten Kennedy when we were doing the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind and that went what 10 16 years before something got done and you're looking at 
kids and students and their entire school careers that nothing gets done to help them. So I really, really hope that the three of you will do everything that you can to not have that attitude that it's not going to get done and that we're going to do something. And maybe you can tell us what your thoughts of to make it happen instead of you know, saying it's not going to happen. Well, what are you going to do to help us to make it happen or to help us to make it happen so it does affect Plymouth? So, so I, I, just to make it clear, maybe I miss it. Maybe you missed, either misunderstood me or I said something. I, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. What I'm saying is that um, it is going to happen. I believe it's going to happen. I just don't believe it will move the needle in this community as much as one would hope for. So that's why I haven't signed on to the Promise Act because for me, it's more about targeting towards special education for transportation costs. Uh, you know, to, why not? That's where we should be fully funding because it has direct impact in this community. If I, the pure people, I signed on to Josh's $100 per person uh, to this community because that has direct impact here. Mm -hmm. If you look at, and I'm, and, I, and I'm just came from a Ways and Means hearing in, uh, in Boston, and the conversation was about what we're doing as a Senate in regards to education. We are going to be spending more in education than we've ever spent. However, the reality is, is it is not the, the number is better, but it's it's not when as good as when we target fifty dollars. If we go to the fifty dollar per pupil, or we do uh, fully fund special education, or we fully fund the circuit breaker, those are the things that have a direct impact. And so that's where my focus has been. Mm -hmm. and, and to your point, I understand that, but within the budget that's there. My job is to try to make sure that this community gets as much as possible, mm -hmm. and that's how, and if you look at fr my, my region from Pembroke all the way down to Falmouth, that's not the case, not even, the, not even close. So he's talking 200 and some odd million dollars in the, in the house that, that has, it's increased. 200 million dollars, and yet the number to Plymouth is really nowhere near the three, three million dollars that you need, right? Mm -hmm. and the Senate, I will tell you, is going to do even more than that. And it's going to be significant to the numbers that I think to you, what you say in the Promise Act. Again, huge dollars, but it's not the way the formula is broken out. It doesn't have participation. Yes, we have more ELL. So, so in those areas, it's going to be a little bit better. But for me, and as, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to fight to get this community as much as possible. And by doing that, it's per pupil, it's, it's special ed, it's the circuit breaker, those are where I focus my efforts. Uh, you know, and so to that extent, I, you know, I, I don't know, but I, I only have what, from <laughs> my experience in, in doing this, it's most of us, this isn't a Republican Democrat thing, this is a regional thing, mm -hmm. and our region, through the Chapter 70 formula, the way it's set up, do, does not benefit as much, and you know, I hear Gary explain three million dollars. That's that is significant, and and I promise you, we could put five hundred million dollars in this year into education, and through the formula, you will not see the money that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so that's my perspective mm -hmm. on that. Formula's got to change. If if I may, Mr. Chair, I do want to address what you're saying is. Um, you're making it sound like that we're not trying and we don't care, and that's oh, no, not. No, 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 no. Let no. me finish. I, but yeah. that's what you're making it sound like. I want to make it clear that we're fighting for everything we can. We signed on to the House mm -hmm. bill for $100 per pupil. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. Yeah. We did another one that Josh did for $50. That didn't happen. So what I'm saying is what happened is we got 30 mm -hmm. per pupil. It's not the 20 that happened last year, but it's the 30 now. So it's a little bit, but as the Senator is saying, that's not even a drop in the bucket what's going to be needed in Plymouth. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue to do that. But remember, we're only two out of 160 and it is rural against urban, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the bottom line. Yeah, yeah. Right. and I, if I if I came across that way, that's not exactly what I meant. But what I meant is, if there isn't the bill out there that you feel fits what you're looking for, then what is going to be done? Like, are you working to create something new? Are you coming up with other? That's more or less what I meant. If there's nothing that you think is going to fit to help us, what are you doing to make sure that we do get the help? That's more or less what I meant. I appreciate that, and I, and I think the, the Promise Act is that we have signed on to is something that, you know, we're trying to push. 
Um, but will it be the answer to what you need? It won't totally be the answer what you need, mm -hmm. which is why I think it's going to need another session or two mm -hmm. before we really to get to what the senator is saying is about the formula really needs to have to change. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be a will. The good part about it, everyone's talking about it. Mm -hmm. That's right. The bad part is nobody knows how to really get there and how do you get that funding for it. And just to go back, the, the biggest gap that you're seeing right now in education is really in the lower performing schools. And so that's where you're seeing all of the focus go. And so that's where the conversation is happening. You will get, I, I'm telling you right now, something is going to happen in regards to a piece of legislation directly towards education, a mix of the three different bills that you're talking about. That's it will happen, guaranteed. Okay. I, I, I only, I guess I, I just want to lower the expectations because everyone's talking about it because I, I mean as I said every school committee has asked me to come before them um, to have this conversation and of course when you're when they're talking they're talking significant dollars it's this is great this is good for us and I just want to show you the reality of even if you invest significant monies the way the formula is isn't <coughs> going to be there so how do you get towards what Gary's talking about J just to stay base mm -hmm. at three million dollars how would I get there the way we get there is to for me is to be you know pres prescriptive to work with my colleagues in su suburban communities that are going up against urban communities and let's face it the urban communities have greater populate legislators greater not greater legislators <laughs> greater <laughs> amount of legislators never greater uh, quantity not quality yes. yeah exactly yes. Yes. but they but they do the have more and that's really where the uh, where that focus is going and so I again I just wanted to you know Please forgive me for being redundant, but I want to make that clear. It really is a, a funding mm -hmm. issue, Thank and you. I want to. You know, just one more thing I want to say too. Um, if you look back at fiscal year 2015, you know, the town of Plymouth chapter 70 money was 23.6, and here we are looking at a house budget for 2020, um, five years later, and we're looking at 26.3. Uh -huh. So. In five years, it's not even three million. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, that's right. and that's the thirty dollar per pupil mm -hmm. that we're looking at. That yeah, it's gone up from twenty to thirty, but mm -hmm. that's my point. It's just it's nowhere near where we need to be. Right, and that's my point as well, Mr. Morgan. Um, well, just to kind of piggyback on what you said, Senator, and um, uh, the, well, I like true. to give kudos to our staff, um, administrative staff, and our teachers because the reason why. We may not get as much money because of the excellent job they do in running our programs and, and keeping us uh, as one of the best schools districts in the, in the state. But we do, like Dr. Meister says, we're treading water and we're finding innovative ways and, and uh, to try to, to stay where we are. But eventually it's going to catch up with us. So we appreciate, we know why in one of the formulas that we're going to get less because of the job we're doing, but don't forget us is what right. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ms. Badger. I was just going to kind of echo the same thing, sentiment that everybody else has had. Thank you for what you're doing and for working really hard to help our students and to help us give our students that education that we've been giving them, but to even to a greater degree. Um, the one thing I did want to say is, um, Senator DiMasito, your comment about um, transportation. That's a thing that right now, and some of the um, school committee members know that I'm trying to work with Mr. Costin on a resolution for MASC in the fall, which obviously it's a resolution, it goes nowhere, but. Um, <laughs> but for people to maybe push it, but to see if we can reallocate how transportation is paid for in the state, where regional school districts, we have a bigger like town mass and streets than a lot of our regional school districts. So to me, it's an unfair, um, I mean, I understand the point was so that communities are working together and it was to push the resources and things like that. But we're in a different place. We can't do that. We have too many kids. If we took Carver back on or, or Carver took us back on, it just wouldn't work. It would be even bigger. So uh, that's one of the things that I'm trying to work for with Mr. Costin to try to figure out what kind of wording we can put forth to hopefully maybe someday in the future see some aid at our way for transportation. If we, if well, we I, I, I do love that idea, yeah. actually, because it's you talk about the, the land mass, and we've had this conversation yeah. quite a bit. And when you do have this resolution, you know, to get that to us, uh, because this is an issue that regional school transportation, of course, I in my district, I do have some regional yes, schools as well <laughs> as you do. Um, and so um, it is a, a topic of funding regional you know, school transportation 
fully funding re regional school transportation as, as opposed to not full, and that's what we've been seeing happen. But there's a group of people that fight together. And so if I, we were able to take Plymouth and put it in there, then I think you'd see some action in there because there's a lot of my colleagues um, that have regional schools and, and you see we, we, we get together and it's, as I said, it's not about Republicans and Democrats. No. <laughs> it's about, you know, it's about communities, smaller communities going up against and feeling left behind. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, it, things aren't great here in Plymouth. You go to Sandwich, I, you would, I mean, the, what they get in sc school aid from the, from them, it, it's, it's scary. And of course, one of our former, your, your former colleagues mm -hmm. is there, Pam Gould, and we were just at this meeting. And it's just, it's because the way the formula was written, written in 1993, and it just progressively becomes more and more challenging, and they're losing students yep. because of the cost of housing on Cape Cod, and it's, so it's just this double whammy, and yet the costs are increasing. And we had a, a really significant conversation in regards to the things that you do now in education that you never did before, mm -hmm. the things that your nurses are dealing with, the mental health, you know, that you're putting in. Those are significant costs. I think that there needs to be a conversation, this was brought up the other day, in regards to the fact that um, why can't we get be reimbursed from Mass Health, the school department, from Mass Health? Mm -hmm. um, in this in this vein, because we're providing mental health services right in school that we did did never do before. Yeah. Um, that's a conversation that I think um, came out of our last meeting, um, and so that's something that I'm going to be focusing on in regards to there to get you know real dollars to to you that will be there. And I and the beauty of that is it's state participation as in, outside of the education budget, and it's federally. Federal participation as well, because it's healthcare services. You're doing healthcare services yeah. beyond education. It's not. I can, I can tell and you, as a recipient more. of Mass Health benefits, I got a call from Mass Health a year ago telling me they were no longer going to pay for Mass Health, pay for my services to a Mass Health student in the school district. They made the decision a year ago to stop providing those benefits. Wow. So you're up against a not even a steep hill here. You're up against a cliff. Because they just changed the, the law last year, and, and and that's and that's why we have to get together and work together. Because the conversation came up, Mass Health isn't going to want to do this. Mm -hmm. It's something that we would have to do legislatively to require Mass Health to do this and be able to be able to make the case that it would be there would be federal participation as well. I believe well. that. I agree with you, Dr. Mayes. Great, great, uh, great conversation. Um, one of the things that we struggle with is if, if you were to put a mileage number by every single child that rides a bus and do that comparison from district to district across the Commonwealth, you would see that our kids ride the bus way longer than most kids. Our bus transportation for regular day, not, not even special education or even out of district transportation is $6 million a year. That's what it costs to get kids home. And not everyone rides a bus. So, you know, I think those are the concerns that we have is Plymouth is, is a unique situation because of ge the, the geography of our, of our community. Um, but, you know, it's almost like we're penalized because we have these conditions, you know. We recently were talking about this too, about the regional school. I'm so glad you brought this up because mm -hmm. I wanted to bring it up, Tal. Right. And we started looking exactly what you said at other parts of the state. Mm -hmm. And we are one of the biggest, we're the biggest even though we're only one community. Right. But when you look at these other communities that are regional districts, yeah. their square footage, that they, the, the square acres they go to, it's a lot less right. than what we do all the time. That's right. So we are starting to have that conversation. So I, I would love to, you know, we would love to work with Michelle and, and Gary on that to see yeah. what we can propose yeah. to get in that regional conversation because mm -hmm. it, we have a good case. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think the way to, to eff effectuate that is probably maybe say uh, set up regional school transportation and or communities yeah. that travel more per right. person. Right. That, that, so that's why if you could get us that per person, per pupil mile traveled, I, I, we need to find a way to fit into that yes. because I think it would it could help. It's, it's, a, it's a calculation that every school district can, can, can submit to the, these are how many miles a bus route does you know we have three tiers I and mean, it's very easy for us to be able to do that gary does it every year it's a matter of uh 
it's 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 cumbersome. Yeah. Um, our bus routing system is very cumbersome, you know, which makes it more expensive. Right. Yes. Our average bus puts on 62 miles a day. So think, compare that to that district you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. They probably don't do 62 miles in a week. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Well, Selleck. we're also looking at the pressures with charter school. Yeah. So yes. what do we, seven, eight million comes out of our budget from chapter 70 for rising tide. And we logistics wise cover their bus routes and transportation costs. So with an antiquated formula, there's an urgency for I think the alleviated burden on our district not being an average district yeah. um, in that need. You know, because we share that fund, you know, mm. we share the money, and then we have our budget, and we have to go to the town, and then that's supplemented through the tax base. So we have to look at charter schools as yeah. well. So that's Mab another academies. moving entity that, you know, 30 years ago we weren't looking at, or even 2015. And to see that percentage increase exponentially, that small increase, we're still sharing that cost with charter, and that rate's going up as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I can share with you again that if you look back at again the same numbers from 2015, uh, the, the, the charter reimburses 1.2 million. Um, in the house budget that is just coming out, it's only 751,000. Mm -hmm. So it's gone down in almost in half. Yeah, and and it'll be worse because in two years from now, Map Academy will be not so phasing up. Yeah, getting their money. Yeah, from us too. So it's going to be worse. And that is was a big conversation uh, when I was at the. So it's actually a, a meeting with superintendents of all Cape Cod because Sturgis is now on their second high school, and so they're growing, and so and they have school choice there, yep. uh, and so you're seeing, you know, it's it's it really complicated there, and a lot of um, a lot of communities are uh, just the, the town of Sandwich, three million dollars just sandwich is much smaller than here and they're sending three million dollars uh, mm -hmm. to Sturgis and so that that's a conversation that you're seeing a lot of pressure the best thing we can do is to join forces with other communities other like communities and I think in this in this vein that's where we're going to get our so where we're going to get our our colleagues to be able to make the case and frankly even in the Boston because bought charter schools are really big in the inner cities because they've had problems with education mm -hmm. and so the, the charter schools have a lot of support so to be able to if that's the case and they have the support there needs to be the funding uh, to to be commensurate with it well, there, if if chapter 70 is readdressed and it's the language is rewritten there needs to be clear concise language with the charter school to alleviate some of that burden because it's not a publicly funded private school it's publicly funded but it has to counter in that consequence especially for districts like Plymouth again we're not an average district I think what are we equated to to Haverhill right mm -hmm. in the in the chapter 70 equation we're closest to Haverhill we're nothing like Haverhill and we're very unique and very different. What we are in North Plymouth versus what the needs are in South Plymouth are inherently different. So I, I appreciate, you know, your advocacy and, and the language and just mm. learning a little bit more about kind of the things that we face at this table with, you know, the social emotional component, the health curriculum that we've had to change and technology changes so frequently as well. These are rising costs that we're faced with consistently. And going to town meeting and looking at our budget, you know, it's a big piece of the pie in Plymouth. It's a big piece, but we are big big district with the largest staff. So there's a lot of minutia and components behind it where we really need to push forward with figuring out the foundation budget and hopefully getting some more funding in. And I know it was a House bill last year. It's sad. It wasn't really heavily debated from what I gather. So it's nice to see that we've had more progress. Mm -hmm. It's just let's hope something comes out of it sooner than later. For sure. yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's an excellent point. And I, and I will Wait. tell you, this is important to us. Mm -hmm. yeah. This conversation really helps us because you're on the front lines this is what you do every day you're you're there uh, dealing with these issues and we are we what we then have to do is take that and then try to apply that into the conversation up there so I want you to know as far from this delegation this conversation is really important and it will help us at least be able to interject these conversations I've heard it loud and clear in regards mm -hmm. to the concerns, in regards to what charter, the, the charter school losses, as far as transportation. All of these things are really important, and I really do think it will help as the argument goes on. So. Ms. Haywood. Oh, I just wanted to talk, when you um, mentioned the, um, 
I guess, the Mass Health um, reimbursement. So, um, our um, or is this delegation in agreement to say um, the Medicaid reimbursement um, that's received for services? I know that regional school districts receive um, it. Go it goes back to the school as opposed to local school districts, where it goes into the municipal fund and doesn't necessarily go back, or the hundred percent doesn't go back to the school. Yeah, and I know that's something that was brought up as well in terms of. Um, how the logistics work I'm not aware so if you could if you could help me in explaining how the logistics work it was a conversation um, and the reason I brought it up is because it was from the social and emotional mm -hmm. expenditures um, have increased rather significantly and a lot of that is not reimbursable that's that was the comment it's coming out of the budget so um, it was, I, I'll give you an example. A prisoner goes into Plymouth House of Corrections. They're on Mass Health. As soon as they go into the House of Corrections, they go off of Mass Health until they're released, and then they come back. Now, why should that? Why should that be the case? And so there are a group of people that try, which, which want to change that because just because they're in prison doesn't change the fact that they're getting health care. They're going to get it when they're out. And so I think the same model should. The argument should be the same is that we're providing health care in a school setting. Right. It should be reimbursed to the school. So outside of your budget, there should be another line item. It would be possibly through Mass Health. I do believe that there's, you know, because it's coming there, that then this that it's matching dollars. Uh, you know, so let's say we put another fifty million dollars in through Mass uh, through Mass Health. Half of that to twenty five million would come from the federal government and it's fair it's a fairness issue I think mm -hmm. it's if mm -hmm. you're providing mental health services those are health care costs mm -hmm. yeah. I, you know, so that's so we, so if you could get me the details on how it works between a local mm -hmm. community as opposed and, to regional, and, and, as opposed to regional yeah. that I'm not aware of oh, okay. well let me give you the details so, yeah. that I know specifically so what <laughs> I would get phone calls from districts in the area not just Plymouth for students who are on mass health who need a risk assessment because their behavior has been out of control or they need an evaluation, a neuropsych evaluation. If they were mass health, for the last decade, mass health paid for those evaluations. Specifically last year, they called me personally and said, we're not paying for them anymore. So I just want you to know that's the specific of it. And it's the same thing with counseling services. It, and it's OT, PT, it's, it's, it's actually um, combined. So yeah. m my understanding, and um, I mean, I can, Dr. Mises could, could um, uh, speak yeah. to it, yeah. but is that um, just on a regional school basis is that they get that, th that reimbursement comes yeah. back to the regional school district as opposed to a local, it goes into the municipal fund for the town yeah, it goes to and the or town city municipal and, fund, the, not and the they allocate so we don't you know what I mean don't we don't receive That's those not their issue. Don't tonight. Tonight. yeah so so this is a policy issue yeah. and I think it's it's pretty well known in um, education um, that you we have the opportunity to do um, uh, billing uh, for um, certain features you know OTPT uh, we actually do a really good job of uh, documenting those segments of time that our counselors work with children for reimbursable services. Uh, so um, that Medicaid reimbursement, we submit the hours. We actually have staff that actually collect all of that. So we do all the work. We do the counseling. We do the work. Um, that then comes in to the town as revenue. So the town takes it in and buys down the debt of the town, opposed to that going to impact the school department. Yeah. So. One of the things that we've done, we work with uh, UMass um, Amherst uh, with, with billing assistance to make sure that we maximize every bit of billing that we possibly can. Uh, we spend about $200,000, $250,000 a year. We bring in about a million. So the town is taking in about $750,000 of revenue from the work that we do for those services. So I think uh, what Ms. Haywood is saying is that with, with certain provisions, with regional schools, the region, regional schools actually can benefit from getting those dollars opposed to the municipality getting the dollars. So it creates some level, it's a policy issue. And I think those are some of the things that I think we, if we could just hammer those, some of those things out would help us dramatically. But I, I will tell you, uh, you know, all, all three of you for coming here tonight, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just grateful that you're here. Yes. I'm, I'm also grateful 
that you've always listened, okay? Mm -hmm. But I think more importantly, if you tell us what we can do, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. if, if you give us a get the people out, go to the superintendent's association. You know, Binny and I, you and I have gone to superintendents and we've pitched ideas in front of them. We will do it. If you think there's something that will tip the balance, mm -hmm. we will do it. So yeah. it's just not us asking. We, we want you to tell us if there's things that you need from us to, to do. Yes. That's, that's a great point. And what helps us in the five years I've been there is if you have ideas, and I've heard of some good ideas tonight, you know, regional transportation, mm. uh, the mass health, if you have ideas for regulation changes mm. that we can do, helping us get that information, r helping write that language for that, we can file bills on each side of the House and the Senate and then do exactly what you're saying. Once the bills are filed, then get a coalition of superintendents, the MMA, I mean, all that. Yeah. But it all starts with having that bill. And you know this, you know, we've got 6,000 bills that are filed in the House, so it's hard to know all that. But if you have ideas for a bill, get it to us. We'll file it, and then we can work that process. And, and <coughs> we just want them to, sur to survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if it, with the, the, the most information that we can possibly get that impacts the most school districts, it's very hard. You know, we're, we're, we're compared to districts. It's hard to compare Plymouth's. Um, ge ge you know, geography and demographics. We're a very, very unique school system. Not, not, not in offerings or any of that. It's just living every day. We, we just have unique, unique, unique challenges, you know. And, and that's the problem with the transportation issue because yeah. we're kind of isolated in that. It's, yeah. it's not like we can that's tie right. into others. Like the so we have role. to tie into, right. it, it, there aren't other communities in our, circ in our circumstance. So that's something we have to define ourselves. That's a piece you know, as this conversation is happening and, and this comes up, I'm willing to file amendments. So I, the word is by the end of June, we will have a education bill out there. Whether it comes to the floor in the fall, most likely that's gonna be the case because we'll be dealing with the budget and it's such a big topic. But to the extent that we can come up with language so that I can file an amendment because we're, we're going to do an education bill. Those are the opportunities where you can actually effectuate change through the amendment process mm -hmm. in, a, in a piece mm -hmm. of legislation. So if we can be creative on this transportation idea, I want to mm -hmm. do this. Uh, in regards to the issue on the mass, the, the mass health issue, uh, uh, Superintendent from uh, Nauset, mm -hmm. uh, Yes. So he brought this issue up and so and he told me he's going to be working with the other superintendents to try to come up with language um, to be able to to be able to address this issue in a broader in a broader scale for things that you're dealing with that you didn't deal with in the past. Those are the places where I think we can help because a piece of legislation is going to go through. How can we find the targeted areas that help these regions? They're going to help the big. They're going to help the big schools. Uh, you know, we know that. How do we get them to help our exactly. schools? And that's what I'm focused mm -hmm. on. So, you can help us to do that. You seem to understand this, the other issue, better than I do. So, if you can get us the information, then we'll file the amendment. You help educate us, and then we can bring the floor fight. Because I guarantee you, if if other than the the transportation issue, if I'm dealing with it, I guarantee you, other others of my colleagues are going to be in the same yeah. boat. And that's where we have strength is when we come together, working together. Miss Hunt. And that that's what I was actually at. That's exactly what I was asking you. But also with the tran the transportation issue, and if you don't have it already, we can get it to you. MASC, the Massachusetts Association of School Committees is trying to fight for the regional part of it and what one of the things miss badgers that we're all trying to do is amend that resolution or have a new resolution for next year's conference to have masc fight for us to include the area or the geographical area so they already have something for regional schools which we can share with you if you don't if you haven't seen that already um, but we want we actually did not support it unless we could make those adjustments to it. So per perfect then. So when you take that language and then try to figure out how exactly. we can, how can, we how we fit can into it? find a way to add us, mm -hmm. that will be an amendment that this delegation, both in the House and Senate, will file on your behalf to try to 
um, make that case. So you need that language in the next couple of weeks. We can send it to As I said, we, it's, our, it's a MESC we policy. Done. We could send it to right. you. So, so as Jason Lewis said, his mandate was by the end of June to have a piece of legislation. So he's going around right now. This is, again, on the Senate side, but the, the House is going to be soon to follow as far as what they're doing on this. And so at that point, if it comes out the end of June, the question is, do we take it up before July 31st? My personal opinion is, with all of what we're doing with the budget, probably not. It will probably be in September or October. But to that point, the sooner we have it, then I have it in the box ready to file, and I can do a better job of educating myself. We just, the, the numbers are, you know, speak for themselves. I mean, we, I guarantee you, we compete with every regional school system out there. I can't imagine that Silver Lake's ge geographic area is no. anywhere near, right? So I, I, I believe that we can, and we'll just take, take Whitman Hanson, take, you know, uh, take Silver Lake, yeah. you take, you know, uh, NOS, uh, Upper Cape Regional. There's so many examples right around us that I'll be able to make that case and then try to add it in, into a budget as, as, and they'll do the same in the House. So these are concrete things and this is why That's this is yeah. important for us to come because you can help educate us on how to help. Okay. help yeah. Mr. Costin. Thank you. Just, just a couple of points. Um, we, um, Ms. Badger and I have worked on some language and some statistics. But it's kind of interesting because we looked at schools like um, Acton Boxborough, 30, 30 square miles, Dudley Charlton, 65, one of the larger ones, Bridgewater, Rainham, 49. Plymouth has 134 square miles, and 37 of that are, are water that we have to drive around to get to the kids who live on the other side. So, um, and the other thing is that. <laughs> no. We <should> be, <laughs> for that. Oh well, hey, let's ask for that the, next year's remember budget. The, <laughs> really? Remember the Sacrish days? Yeah. yeah. I, remember I, the Sacrish days? I drove. I drove a bus to Sacrish and back. The three kids. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the other. The other interesting thing is, and I know you. 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 You all. You know this, but um, that the reimbursement rate for regions is 71 percent. There's a pot of money at 62 million dollars in, the, in mm. the state of Massachusetts. And it, it's just a matter, I think, of, and we'll, we'll send you something uh, once, you know, yeah. everyone reviews it, that uh, modifying Chapter 71, section for regional reimbursement. To that, to that point, if you took the model and you were added into the regional school, what would that mean to the town of Plymouth? <laughs> Um, there, there's there's qualifiers for I have my what's, shoes on so I no, can't for count, what's so. what's um, reimbursable <laughs> transportation you know when within so many miles of the school etc but I mean it's safe to say that would be would be a few million dollars easily so could offset it. that's you know and that's significant and that's a way to help and I and I think you know I'm not saying I can get it done but I think I have a, I think we all have a really good argument to make with it so you know I want to, we want to focus on that very, very issue. But I, it's not the only issue, but it's something we have to do. So it's charter schools, it's the, the, uh, addressing the mass health and this other transportation thing. So we, we, we've, yes, Mr. Pinto. Yeah. I just want to make kind of an echoing comment, um, you know, working on coalition. Just want to remind every, you know, the everyone here, you know, feel free always to reach out also to the EAPC. You know, we're, we're always out there. We're not afraid to fight for education. We've, we've fought for the school budget before. We'll do it again. Um, so, so anytime, you know, boots on the grounds, knocking on doors, making calls, getting the, the word out there, you know, always feel, you know, the ability to reach out to us to, to fight for education because, you know, we, that, we've taken a lot of your time tonight. We know you're very out to so many meetings, but I will give you the last word. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to, who's going to take it? <laughs> I'm giving you the last word. Oh, you bet him. This is, first of all, thank you so much for bringing us here tonight. I, this is long overdue. It, it's, it's really important that we do this. I think we should do it a little bit more often as well. Uh, that's obviously up to you, but we'll be available anytime you're doing You are on TV, right? We're live on TV. That's right. Are you going to get a picture? Is there a photo? Don't worry, Kathy. They can't see your baby somewhere you can hold. But, but no, seriously, this is, this is very important. This is helpful stuff. 
And this is how we get things done, by getting information from you to get it into uh, the budget. And Tom, great point. Thank you so much. And, and we will take you up on that as well. But all of us working together, because we are in a unique situation, we just need to make the case together. So thank you again for having us here. And, and to this point, I, I really do I mean, appreciate this, this school committee, this school department. You know, this really is an amazing school department that we have here. It's something I'm very proud of that we've seen. We've seen, you know, over a period of time, we've seen these two amazing schools uh, go there. There's such, I, I have not seen in, I've been around for a while, you know, 21 years, I have not seen such collaboration and cooperation from the town and the school system. It, it, when I first started, it was a battle between yep. them. Well, but I think there, yeah, I mean, you know, we remember. And, yes, and I remember that. To why see I what we've seen <laughs> now, it's, it's, I believe it's because this community has a great deal of respect for the product that is coming out educationally. And yes, it's expensive. We have $100 million is a lot of money. But the reality is, is that it is, the product that is coming out is, is really impressive. And I know a lot of people take a lot of pride in our school system. And you are all on, on that front line and working day in day day in and day out and you know to to Gary as as you all know I mean someone I admire greatly and has uh, kind of been at the, the head of this this uh, this school system uh, you've done a phenomenal job I know the town is very proud of the work that you've done and you you and your team and uh, and I uh, you know I can promise you anything that I can do to try to assist and help uh, in any way I promise you I'll do that so thank you for giving us this thank opportunity thank you for being, words. being here this evening we're, we're going to take a little break at this point thank you very much we're back in 15 minutes meeting back into order thank you very much that was a really good hearing we had uh, we now have to do a, a public hearing on school choice so at this moment I'm going to declare the opening of a public no let me hear the report on, on your recommendation first yes um, according to master Enroll law chapter 76 section 12b um, the school committee uh, every school committee committee in the Commonwealth by June uh, must take up on their agenda uh, the option for um, every school district to either participate or not participate in school choice. Uh, the Plymouth Public Schools, uh, since this uh, Mass General Law was in, in the written uh, docket for uh, school districts, we have never participated yes, in school choice. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, we were overcrowded. We decided that wasn't a good option for us. As we move forward, our population has dropped. Uh, we've noticed that during our population drop, we've added a lot of um, a variety of programs that have really helped to meet the needs of our special education population. And we've also noticed that our, our classroom availability and classroom sizes are, are somewhat stable in the sense that we have manageable classroom size. Um, in my opinion, if we opened up school choice for the Plymouth Public Schools, we would see a compromise in that and for that um, position. Dr. Sorensen and the school committee uh, here tonight, I, I do not recommend that the Plymouth Public Schools uh, open up uh, enrollment to, to school choice for this district. Okay. Do committee members have a question about the superintendent's recommendation? Okay, so at this moment, I'm going to open up a public hearing, and I will announce that the town of Plymouth School Department has made a recommendation that we will not participate in school choice. Is there anybody at attending tonight's meeting who would like to speak to the school committee during this public hearing. Seeing no hands, I'm going to declare the public hearing closed. Dr. Maestas. Dr. Sorensen, I will inform the Department of Education that the school committee has voted to not support well, we school choice. Yet, but we will. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, I will take a motion. I move. Ms. Ms. Uh, Burgess moves the recommendation of administration yes. of this, that is to not participate in the school choice program. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Badger. Is there a question on that? Okay, we will now vote on that. I just voted incorrectly, guys. <laughs> oh. Mine's not coming up. It's not coming up. Yes, the, my, my system's the down. The internet crashed while we were on break, so. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, so we'll take call, the vote orally know. then. Yeah, uh, all those in favor of the motion? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Sorry. Um, 
Dr. Campbell's controlling the meeting tonight, so <laughs> like, I don't see it, like, I don't see it. and I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was an action item because okay. I'm not in control, uh, <laughs> which is a good thing. So you will so notify. So I will notify the Department of Education that the, the, uh, the Plymouth School Committee has voted uh, to not support school okay, choice for the Plymouth Public Schools. Uh, the next item on our agenda is to do our beginning prelim preliminary work on the superintendent's evaluation, Dr. Maestas. Yes, tonight um, in your school committee agenda, you have the Massachusetts Department of uh, Secondary and Elementary Education Evaluation Form for the 2019 superintendent's evaluation. It's a form that you've all seen before. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this form is uh, to be completed by the committee. Uh, our next school committee, I will report on, uh, have the final report on my goals. Uh, this is a little bit later than uh, about, well, actually, it's not really that much later because uh, typically we. Um, typically we have to rush it through. We have to rush it through because the potential school committee change. Uh, there won't be a change this year. So with that aspect, we have a little bit more time, which actually gives you more uh, availability for time for input as the, the, the district moves forward. Um, but I will have a report for you next meeting on uh, the status of my goals, which is a small part of the evaluation. Take a look at the evaluation and the components of it. As you see, there are a lot of pieces to it, and the form is in the agenda tonight for your review and for your input uh, to the chair uh, when the chair is um, able to compile it uh, based on your input. So the items are there for your input. Uh, my suggestion is that you uh, um, review this and, and start collecting information so that you can have that. Any questions? Ms. Badger. So you, at the next meeting, we'll get the information that you're providing as backup? Is that what you just I said? Will, I, will, okay. I will do. I yeah. just was making sure I understood. Yeah. Okay. I'll have a, a report for you on my goals, but what I'll also do is uh, put together, like I typically do every year, a list of all of the events and uh, benchmark opportunities that have happened throughout the year. Uh, relative to some of the, um, of the evaluation um, benchmarks. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay, we can move along then. Mm. Uh, oh, Ms. Oh, Badger has a question. Ms. Badger. And so if we're pushing it out, then it would be in June that we will, the June, yeah. first June meeting? I'm just, you know, yeah, just like the schedule. Yeah. I, well, my, plan, my plan was sure. after we yeah. hear uh, Dr. Maestas's goals at the next meeting, then I will uh, make a recommendation as to when, when these to you. Okay. documents need to be in. Okay. Planner, you know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Right. We, you don't want to miss that meeting, that's now. why. <laughs> a little more time. Yep. Okay, job descriptions. Um, yes, we have four job descriptions tonight. This is the um, remaining clerical positions in the district. Um, so the first is the special education office secretary, which is a 200-day position. Um, this is the individual who works very closely with Mrs. DeRosha, the assistant director of special education, um, on all aspects of the out-of-district process. There's a lot of different pieces, especially when students graduate and we merge transcripts and things of that nature. Um, and actually speaking of the Medicaid process, that's another big piece with third party billing and things of that nature. So um, this individual does work really the school year with additional days on either end of the summer and before school starts. So that's a special education office, 200 day secretary. Any questions on this one? Ms. Badger? I just have, I think it's across the, the this, Maybe there, maybe it's in another one of these job descriptions or two, and it just says process rec recognition and all and for new hires. And mm -hmm. is that do they? Does that just go through those secretaries and then into HR? Correct. They and do. Then, um, so they just they it do up and some down. paperwork that. Okay. They do the interview process and then it comes over to HR to process the official hire okay. and, the, and the contracts and things are in my office, but the initial screenings and things of that, that nature are there. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So we'll take a motion on this one. Ms. Badger. I move we approve uh, uh, Special Education Secretary 200, 200 hours. 200 days. Seconded 200 by? Days. 200 hours. Okay, Seconded by? It won't come up. You're not there either. Okay. It won't come up. Is there a second? Ms. Bad Ms. Burgess is a second. Are there questions? Okay. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Now we're on the line. Are we back? So good at that, Chris. Do I vote? We, do you have? Can you? Yes, sir. Can you all say? I, oh, I, I don't, can't. I didn't vote. I just didn't Should we go again. out and in again? Oh, now it's oh, here. No. Back. You can try. It's up to you guys. I, I, yeah, All right. I 
<laughs> back up. Try it just it. works. Yep. Back up. This is the 200. This is the first one. Yeah, this is the first one. This Can is you the first one. Just can't. click join I just the meeting. Out, but I don't know why it's I not coming back. It'll up. update you. Right. If you could, sync does it too. Only only, only Kim's. Mm. Not no, Kim mine's. Now. I just signed out. Oh. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 Good like town meeting here. I know. Now. I'm not even getting on that. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Oh, Everybody voted in favor. Error we'll go occurred. on to the next yes. one, please. Um, the next one is a very similar position. Yeah, it's also in the special huh? education office, but it's really the individual who works directly with Stacy Rogers. Um, and there's many facets to this job from um, when students graduate and the transitioning of the IEP into an electronic file. There's so many different layers. Um, but this is intentionally a 220-day position, but they're very similar in nature because of the overlap within the department. So, all right. Um, I don't. Uh, we're going to have to vote by hand because we're stuck with that yeah, screen. Stuck. Yeah. Because Kim never got to vote. I'm not even getting in. Yeah. Okay. So, um, is there a, is there a is there a motion to accept the 220 day okay. job description as presented? Ms. Tricelli, it moves that. No, Seconded by Ms. Burgess. Is there a question on the 220 day job description? Okay, we'll take the vote by show of hands. All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. And the next one is the coordinator secretary. For yes, and this we merged. We had prior to very outdated job descriptions for the academic coordinator secretary and then the um, visual performing arts. So we merged them all into a coordinator secretary. So there's, because they don't each have one personal, there's a lot of sharing within the department. So um, this is brand new as a title in this area, removing the the different specific layers, kind of like we did with the academic coach. Mm -hmm. So, um, and this is working within their offices, a lot of the, from the science fair to the National History Day to um, bringing candidates in, book representatives, a lot of different factors. So, that is Okay, it. any questions on it? I'll take a motion. Ms. Burgess <laughs> moves, the, moves the recommendation on this one, seconded by Mrs. Badger. Uh, Ms. Badger, is there any questions on this? Okay, we can vote this one, I believe. Electronic, I think. I can't. I can't. Mm -hmm. nope. I'm in, but I can't well, vote. I'm in, but it'll, it'll, it'll come up now. All right, it's not coming up. So we'll take it by show of hands. No, All those in favor? Came up. No, mine came up. Okay. That's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Yours came up, too. Yeah. Yes. In the final one, the technology repair and services, this is a position that has been merged into. Um, one role um, working very closely with Alan McLean's office and the inventory and equipment as well as the school due database system and many different aspects of our technology and also a big new part of this job is the distribution of technology for the MCAS testing so the tracking of that and ensuring that the buildings have their what their needs are for the technicians who work on that so um, this individual is also a 220 day employee so they tag every piece of equipment there's a, there's a lot of layers to it as well okay are there any questions We'll take a motion. Uh, Mr. Morgan. I'll make a motion and approve the job description. <laughs> Thank you. Seconded by Ms. Haywood. Question <laughs> on the motion? Okay. By show of hands, all those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Yep, and I think just to close on those, we have, it's been three years, but we've completed, um, Tom and I are going to miss each other, um, we've completed all the EAPC job descriptions, paras, teachers, Yay. counselors, psychs, er, clerical, and we're in the process, just so you folks know, of moving outdated ones that haven't been updated. They're on electronic school boards, so they're all on the HR website. So we're hoping to start with COBRA in the fall. Um, we're going to take the summer off of job descriptions um, and focus on hiring, and then we'll start with the COBRA ones, which are very outdated as well. But we do have some that will just be moved over that are in the 2000s, like the superintendent's job description. So we're that's our next tier to it. But I do want to thank the <laughs> EAPC, because they've sat every Tuesday for an hour and a half for three years. So <laughs> they've Huge been very undertaking. helpful. So it was great. OK, thank you. Ms. Badger. Is there like, are we putting something into place, and it sounds like we are, yep. so that we don't ever have a 1991? Yes. Like, yeah. I got to get them all. Yeah. The, we have COBRA are mainly 1992. Yeah. So yeah. I graduated it's, from college in 1994. Yeah. So it was, was we're going to get there. So. school. Come on. So really? we're going to try. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have a system, and I think we've um, we've been very collaborative about when a new, some new yeah, positions yeah, crop up, event liaisons have cropped up. Yeah. Um, right. Different something things we're going to try to be yeah. ahead of the curve. And just like put them on like a three year Yeah, we have a big document. A lot of pieces, but lot. I like projects, so that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have everything printed out? For what? Yeah. 
I just wonder if we get to the warrant and I can't pull it up. Okay, uh, reports and proposals from committee members. Ms. Hunt. Um, just, just a couple of things. I know that um, Dr. Maestas had talked about the law day with the free speech, and I don't, I don't remember you saying a whole lot about you receiving that award. So, um, <laughs> I wanted to congratulate you on the. I don't know. It's the Terry Murray Award, right? Yeah, right. So we were all very happy to be there and be yeah. be so proud of you and everything that you're doing. And congratulations again on that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I know Ms. Badger and I had a chance to go see Anything Goes. It was awesome, just as usual. I think we expect so much now when we go to these uh, events and we get what we are, are expecting, so that was fun. Um, I had a chance to do the, um, the Senior Showcase for, for North, and that was amazing. And uh, Ms. Sylvia did a, uh, Silva did a great job. Um, she kind of, uh, what I liked at the very end is she kind of pulled all the kids around her and told her, you know how amazing they are and that this is you know the, like the last day of their the last big event of their high high school in these uh, areas and to go out and do great things and it was it was really awesome to see how in just that short a time that she's been here how connected she is mm -hmm. now in Plymouth and with the kids and how she really takes ownership for for their success which right. was really you know heartwarming to say and then um, the last thing is, is, this week is Teacher Appreciation Week. That's right. I know that some schools might celebrate at different times due to schedules, but this is the official week. And um, I just wanted to let all the teachers out there know how much I appreciate them, and I'm sure we all do. Um, I, I know every year since my kids were little, I, I send a personal email to every teacher. It's bittersweet for me. This is my last <laughs> one. I'm going to cry. But um, you know, I'll be do that's what I'll be doing tonight. College. But um, I just wanted to let everybody know that, you know, that we really appreciate it, and we do what they do. We do what we do for them and the students. And you know, it's it's sad that we've only got one week out of the year that we really go out of our way to to thank them. So I just wanted to publicly mm -hmm. announce that. <clears throat> Say what. Um, um, and also um, appreciating the teachers. Um, I also want to, this is also National Nurses Week as oh, well. Yay. So I want to um, send my appreciation to those, those nurses that work for our district. Mm. And, um, yes. And yes. the teachers. And the teachers. <laughs> no, they are teachers. Uh, yes, Absolutely. yeah, nurse educators. They, they are yep. So educators. that work for the district um, and everything they do. Um, it, even in this um, environment of mounting yep. um, of responsibilities. So, thank you. Um, did do you want us to do our conference? Oh, gosh, today? that was supposed to be on tonight's agenda. It's, I'm going to have to time. move it. Okay, yeah, so we'll that is it. totally fine. Okay. Um, I just also want to mention that uh, Ms. Haywood and I went to the South Biomedical Senior yes. Night, mm -hmm. and it was so nice to have seen the program in the beginning and to see these That's students right. now, like, um, what they've accomplished and what they're interested in doing. and. Um, it, it was just it was really awesome to see it from with these first kids who got the opportunity to go through the program mm -hmm. so. that's real good mm -hmm. it's awesome Miss mm. Burgess yeah I said uh, I went to law day as well and uh, north I went to the um, well it was both schools a, a cappella time mm -hmm. and um, also I went to the uh, north senior uh, showcase the senior projects showcase mm -hmm. We've got a lot coming up. Mm -hmm. A lot coming up. We'll be running. Um, <laughs> some reports and proposals. Uh, some of us were able to go to the selectmen's meeting a couple of weeks ago oh, on that's Tuesday right. night. I've got that. Too. Did you speak yeah. up yeah. to that? Uh, yeah. No, I didn't speak up to it, but I went. Yes. <laughs> it was a nice. <laughs> and there was a follow-up information that you sent yes. us. Yes. Yeah, I sent a follow-up information yes, that again. that JC actually um, yes, broke her own school record yeah, that's uh, on cool. the hundred uh, hurdles, which. She's a fantastic athlete, and um, I imagine she, her season's not over yet for outdoor track, so she, her national championship was indoor track. Yeah. So we'll see how things work out for her yeah. moving forward. And I was able to attend uh, uh, at the No Place for Hate uh, concert on Saturday night, which was a really super nice play, super nice group to be with. I thought that was really That's nice. Great. Thank you for coming. There we go. Okay, yeah. anything else from proposals and proposals? All right, moving along then, PYDC. is there a report from PYDC this yeah. evening? I didn't bring a written report, but I know I know what happened really. The season's really gearing up for the um, uh, 
stickers on the uh, coolers at the we have um liquor stores right the stickers. we have 20 now Language on with the all hard copy. Now, 20 liquor stores in Plymouth. um i went to two of them and both of them are going to take it so that's a good thing and um uh so many things are going on now with the well they had all the um Posters, the pictures, what are they called? Uh, okay, photo voice? Photo, yeah, photo voice, because they were, I, I tried to get to that, but I couldn't get to that one. At um, PCIS, they had, yeah, the thing that evening, Monday evening. And, um, but lost. everything's coming along. There's uh, this weekend, uh, this Wednesday, um, there's uh, Taylor's message, it's at the Spire, and um, that's from 6 to 7.30. And uh, hopefully, a lot of parents and, and some students go to that. It's uh, it's free, so um, and it should be able to get some parking downtown on Wednesday, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I guess yeah, that's where I'm going to leave it right now. Unless you have something to add, do you have anything? No, I think you've mentioned the the, the major events. Things that are meeting. right now. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Angie. Okay. Um, on to the building committee. Was there a meeting? I, I couldn't go. Morgan? Um, no, their next meeting is actually this Thursday. Yeah, it's this Thursday. Personnel. Yes. Um, we have three classified appointments to report, five short-term maternity leaves, and four resignations. Okay, thank you for that report. Mm -hmm. Any questions on the personnel report? No, you can't either. Here. Do you have the warrant? I got it. Here. All right. Uh, we're, we have been able to locate the language on the warrant ah. on one of the screens, so we can now do the warrant. Okay. <laughs> Whereas school committee members have been provided with a copy of the cost center transfer and transaction summary report and the warrant for review, I move that the Plymouth School Committee accept and approve the re report and accounts payable warrant number S05-0919, dated Thursday. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Dated... <laughs> Yeah, what's Thursday's no, date? Thursday. May 9th, 2019, in the amount. They cut it off. In the amount of zero dollars as presented. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's okay. all zeros. Do you have it in there? You want to read it? It's in the um, thing. Three, you want me to amount, The like amount 300. is $365,446.03. As presented. As presented. That's, <laughs> thank you. Zeros on there. Thank you for those no date. two <laughs> people who <laughs> made the <that> motion. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second to that motion? Oh Ms. Badger is the second. Are there any questions? Okay, so oh, we have to take the vote by show of hands. All those in favor? Who's that is unanimous. Here? What was the second? Ms. Haywood? Yeah. Oh, uh, Ms. Badger, okay. Ms. Badger was the second. Mm -hmm. Look at this. That's funny. Uh, we have some uh, obsolete materials. Yes, tonight we have some textbooks from Plymouth Community Intermediate School Science Program, uh, 36 of them. And uh, we recommend that those um, uh, become a discard item for the school committee tonight. You've heard the recommendation. Anybody want to move it? Ms. Badger? I move that we dispose of the science textbooks okay. from 1991. And that was seconded by Ms. Haywood. Is there a question on those? Okay. <laughs> By show of hands, all those in favor of that motion? <laughs> my question. I believe, was that a vote in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other business to come before the oh, committee this evening? Seeing no hands? We're back. Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much.